Why? Get up and screw this. Why didn't we have this uh, prepped up before we came on here? What, you, you ain't got enough leg room over there? Look no. at the leg room you got. Now I got some. Dress up in there. There we go. WZR Army. Hey, what's up? It's Tuesday night. What's people watching? What's the date today? 22nd. 22nd? April 22nd. It is uh, time for another edition of WZR TV Tuesdays. Now, what's that? the one thing? Go what's ahead. the one thing that I said before we came in? I said, make sure you have the... The second we start speaking? The right. second we start speaking. Right. Should have already been up. Anyways, uh, hello. It's Tuesday, April 22nd. Now that the marriage bitching is over and shit. 8 to 10 Eastern time. We're going to be here for the next two hours. Talking pro wrestling. It's good to see you too. Steven Gerwick in the chat room. Steve Gerwick. Steve Gerwick in, oh. the, uh, in the chat room. I, know I haven't that. seen him in a long time. Is that Gerwick done that? Does he still, is Gerwick uh, still up? Yeah. Is it? No the doubt. ugliest site in the history of wrestling. No, the list, you know what? That's big. You know what? Big-ass site from what I remember. Yeah, no doubt. He's uh, He's been around as long he's as us. Up. Yeah. Longer, maybe longer? I don't know, maybe. Mm. But anyways, uh, how's it going? Uh, we're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. Uh, WWE and TNA News. We're going to run down Monday Night Raw from last night as well. A live chat room. Lots and lots of people in there as always tonight. WZRonline.com. Motherfucking dot. Slash chat. WZRonline.com slash chat. We're going to be here uh, Monday Night Raw. My God. The Raw last night, I, and I put it up on Facebook. It seemed to lag and lag yeah. and lag and lag. I've Did changed my not? opinion. A lot happened the more I think about it. Like it was just, a good show. I don't know if it was a Decent. good show, but they definitely did a lot. Like, I was thinking, like, God, this is a bunch of useless, pointless bullshit. But when I was reading it over today, because I was drunk as fuck last night when I was doing play-by-play. -play. <laughs> and play-by-play -play makes you hate the show anyway, because it's three hours and you're typing the entire goddamn time. But uh, when I was looking it over today, I'm like, man, they started a lot of different angles last night. And they wow. developed, like, they changed course with a lot of characters or gave characters new things or you know what I mean we'll get through it when we uh, run it down but right it wasn't as bad as I thought it wasn't a terrible show it just seemed that, that when you got that to the third, say, yeah, you got to the third on, hour yeah. right you got to that third hour and you were like wow man it's only 10 o'clock I know? remember specifically looking down at the clock I think it was 9 28 I said you gotta be fucking kidding me we're only halfway through the show yeah so yeah you, you know it was a long one man it was a long it was one some, a, some uh, weeks three hours isn't enough it goes too quick mm. And then other weeks, it's like, God damn, finish this, you know, I want to be done. Yeah. <laughs> um, listen, uh, some breaking news from the uh, WWE SmackDown tapings tonight. Um, they are, I mean, main event just got done airing on the WWE Network. They're uh, beginning to tape WWE SmackDown right now. can tell you um, that there is a steel cage uh, hanging above the ring tonight, so... What that means, uh, you brought it up earlier, probably a tease for Cena Wyatt at the pay-per-view, but uh, there is a uh, steel cage hanging above the, uh, the is ring. Is that breaking tonight. news? Or is that just news from the SmackDown tape? It's, to I, me, breaking news is news. something big, like a huge thing. You want some breaking news? Yes. Extreme Rising. Have you followed this promotion at all? I know that they had the one thing with the Sabu overdose. They had the thing Shane Douglas, you don't work me, I work you. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, and then they canceled. Yeah, I'll let you tell it. But yeah, I, I followed enough of it. Shane Douglas was originally in charge of, of this promotion. Yeah, okay? he's and, the promoter. Uh, Right, and there were uh, a lot of issues with uh, with the promotion, with Keep talking checks about bouncing <laughs> and, and people not being paid, this, that, and the other thing. Um, so Shane, Shane Douglas was basically ousted, and um, in came a promoter by the name of Steve O'Neill, who promised that now that he was running things, things would be a lot smoother yeah. people would be paid there wouldn't be any issues and they were going to get back to normal business running these live shows you know every month or two every couple of months yeah. they would run a couple didn't they, um, they'd run a weekend a weekend shoot where they do like a friday saturday night type deal yeah didn't they have one show that like did really good attendance like two three thousand people or something that was the last show that shane douglas was in charge of um the one that 
drew a and huge And real quick, crowd. you should, for the people who don't know, which most, I'm assuming, people listening here would know that kind of thing, but what, it basically, it was an ECW reunion show that they turned into a regular thing. Sabu, Sandman, yeah. New Jack, all the ECW guys, you know, Extreme Rising. Exactly. ECW rises again, pretty much, yes. with, you know, and it was a mix of new breed talents, guys like Luke Hawks and, and people like that. Who? Luke Hawks. An indie wrestler. A Never very good of. indie wrestler, by the way. Um, so this guy, Steve O'Neill, comes in and, and takes over the promotion. Well, a couple of weeks ago, you know, it starts coming out that, you know, guys aren't being paid. Uh, flights aren't being booked. The event's getting closer and closer. And I started going on Facebook, and I said, the more issues, the more <laughs> That's issues. That's why I don't like the chat, but the strength off. <laughs> right. Man. The Is more that true? He asked for Sabu asked for weed last year. Like he said, "I'm not going if they don't give me some weed or something." Yeah, there was a story with that where he asked for drugs. Um, I didn't think it was pay, weed; it was something harsh or like coke or fucking crack. I thought it was or something. something. That was the story that was floating out. Yeah, there. I don't think it was ever confirmed. But um, so Steve O'Neill comes in and he says, yeah, 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 "There's not going to be any problems this, that, and the other thing." Well, a couple of weeks ago, these issues started coming out where they were having all just random stuff. So I started using the hashtag Doomed. Yeah, on, I saw your on, Facebook on Facebook, shows. basically. Why did they cancel the shows? Real quick? This promotion is doomed. Well, it's a, Are you building up? Okay. Right, right. So, uh, so O'Neill comes in and uh, turns out that Luke Hawks, who I just brought up, an indie wrestler, who is currently their champion, and the reason that he's champion is they had a match between Luke Hawks and Stevie Richards, who was the Extreme Rising champion. They held it at another event besides Extreme Rising. They defended well, the title on a different show. They defended the okay. title on a different show. Well, Stevie Richards winds up losing the Extreme Rising title to Luke Cox. The promoter comes out the following days or the following day and says that wasn't supposed to happen. There wasn't supposed to be a title change. So whoever was booking this event... You sure that's going to work? Wasn't... No, no. So anyways... It sounds like they're redoing... If you remember the original ECW, it started... It was Eastern Championship Wrestling. They were part of NWA. And Shane Douglas wins this tournament. He's the new NWA champion. He throws the belt down... You know, and they can all kiss my ass. He throws the belt down, crowns himself the first ever ECW champion. Right, and it makes sense going back to the day. Going back to the day. Well, so Luke Hawks is now (laughs) in possession of the Extreme Rising title, and the plan was that they were going to do an angle on the uh, on the next show where they, you know, Stevie Richards would still be crowned ECW or uh, Extreme Extreme Rising champion. So uh, Luke Hawks comes out uh, a couple of days Uh, ago, and he says, uh, he says, listen. I still haven't been paid. My flight hasn't been booked. I'm keeping these dates open and not working for other promotions due to the fact that coming to your show, I've agreed to do your show. He pulls out uh, a couple of days ago. He's, I think it was Friday night or Thursday night or something like that. Says so this is, you know, uh, this guy's just dicking me around. The Steve O'Neill guy's dicking me around. I'm pulling out. Then it turns out that Rhino pulls out of the event. Sabu double booked himself for a big time wrestling event and the extreme rising events together Uh-oh. so he offered to say hey listen i'll work your friday night show i'll work your saturday night show so he would split the difference 50 50 okay yeah look what's going on here though what oh no again i told you it's coming and going yeah really I don't know. Nobody said anything. Uh, X out the browser. This. What the fuck? I didn't click anything. What happened there? X out the... Uh, you're going to have to X out the browser, but that's going to fuck us up for the archive, huh? What do you mean fuck up the archive? <coughs> We're going to skip like crazy. Probably. For the rest of the archive. Yeah. Hmm. Until it, uh, until it resets itself. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. X everything out. I'm trying, man. All right. We'll X everything out. We, uh... Once we X everything out, we'll get back to normal here. Everything uh, everything needs to catch back up. We can go. We I don't, don't know need if it will, a. Uh, Last time so. we started it, we stopped everything and restarted, and that's what figured. Don't we tell never, me we're gonna have to do a Wednesday show again. And then we never reloaded the browser to make sure it didn't. Happen I. Again. You know what? I think we could put all the equipment on this laptop. We would have to do a test. There's no camera. Oh, there, there is a camera. There is a camera. Why the fuck don't we use that? I know. I, I know. thought there was no camera. We could, but we, we need this computer normally with the Wi-Fi. We're gonna need this computer to uh, to do everything, you know. And that and the plug never stays in. That yeah, would be a big problem. yeah, that would be a huge problem there with the internet. I don't know, man. Huh? 
I mean, the audio is probably okay right now. But yeah, the audio would be uh, the I audio guess. would be, uh, be fine. What does it look like? Pull up the. Uh, it seems like it's better now. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's back now. Yeah, All right. We thought that last time, and it looked good for us. But then when we, I rewatched it, it was still doing it. Well, the archive takes a while to catch up because you know. Yeah. It, if we it turn would... it off and back on, that might help. But no, we don't want to do that. No. Or yeah, you know what? Maybe we should do that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do. How long would it take to catch up for the archive? Is it going to screw us up for the whole show? Well, it would be a different archive. Everything we just did wouldn't no, be on the archive. that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. But if All we're right. going to do it, we, I mean, we're only 10 minutes in. We could do it now and start over. No, 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 no. Let's just keep going. It'll yeah. catch up, dude. If, if The archive's the archive. Right. You know what I mean? By the way, I got a tweet today from, uh, from Dana. Yeah. It said something like a lot of views for the, uh, for the archive last week. More than usual. Yeah. Crazy. yeah. Anyways, you promoted a lot, or... Uh -uh. Not at all. Just on Facebook? Not at all. That's all I did, too. Yeah, it's crazy. All right. Was it the uh, the tribute one or the regular one? It might have been the tribute. Because that makes sense. It might have been the tribute yeah, show. That makes Probably sense. right. All right, so anyways, uh, so Luke Hawk says that, fuck it, dude, I haven't been paid. I'm I'm off Extreme Rising. I'm not, I'm not doing this. Hardcore Road Trip contacts him and says, hey, we've got a double shoot this weekend, too. Why don't you come and appear on our show? Who? Hardcore Road Trip. Canadian promotion. Is that a promotion? Oh, okay. I Cana the name uh, of a guy. All right. Canadian, Canadian promotion. So Luke Hawks agrees to appear on the Hardcore Road Trip promotion. Then he comes out and he cuts a YouTube video promo on Extreme Rising. And he basically says, Steve O'Neill, you're a douchebag. You know, nobody likes you. A lot of your guys are going to pull out of your shows, this, that, and the other thing. Because you don't book flights. Uh, you don't pay. There's been tons of uh, tons of issues. <laughs> so cuts this promo and he says, by the way, I've got the Extreme Rising title, so maybe I'll just go to Hardcore Road Trip and maybe I'll appear on their show with the title. Sounds similar to back in the old school ECW days with what you were talking about just a couple of minutes ago, you know, taking the title to another promotion, throwing it in the trash can like Medusa did, right, with the yeah. WWE Divas title. Women's um, title. Women's title. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Luke Hawk pulls out. Then it comes out today, earlier this afternoon, the Twitter and the Facebook accounts of Extreme Rising mysteriously disappeared. And Steve O'Neill, the promoter, had said on Sunday night he was going to issue a statement and, you know, he was going to clear everything up and everything was still a go. Then it comes out over the weekend that the iPay-Per-View events that they had planned, no more. Gone. No more iPay-Per-View events. Uh, and then it comes out on Sunday. Well, uh, we might do the iPay-Per-View. We're not, we're, we're kind of, it's kind of up in the air. We'll let you know, you know, later on. So the uh, the statement that was supposed to be issued on Sunday night never comes out. Okay? That takes us to today. Today, everybody got a text message. All Extreme Rising events, all scheduled events canceled. No more. Done. So the entire roster that took off this weekend from other indie events is yeah. basically, fuck you. Probably either book flights or got, you know, arrangements, whatever. We're not doing shows. Yeah. You're screwed. Sorry. Then, Sorry, in the announcement... Like yeah. Sorry about you. All right. Then, in the announcement, they tell the fans who have purchased tickets, instead of the promotion themselves refunding the tickets... They tell the fans, well, contact your credit card company. Call Visa, call MasterCard, and tell them I need a refund for this show. When you do that... How does that work? That doesn't how, how does that work? When you do the that... when you don't give a fuck that somebody... The credit card company says, well, how do we know it. that these yeah. events aren't being scheduled? Then they say, well, go back to the store that you bought your tickets on and, and get, a refund, get a refund there. Wherever you bought your tickets, basically... Call the credit card companies or go back to the store, go wherever. That is going to cause so many issues. Not only that, but the promoter has already taken this money. So it seems like these fans have been dicked out of their money. If you bought tickets, good luck getting your it's money not, back. There's an MMA story, and I don't remember the specifics. I remember the guy was contacting me a lot, asking for promotion. I was doing MMA news at the time and stuff. Right. And he ends up canceling the gig. 
and just took the money and ran and disappeared for a while. That and seems he, like he came back and he tried to come back like several a couple of years later or something and, and everybody was like, Fuck you, you think we're doing so, business with you after that bullshit? Steve O'Neill, the promoter, <laughs> is as of this afternoon is nowhere to be found. He said he was gonna issue a statement. He said he was gonna do an interview with uh, the PW Insider uh, website. Nowhere to be found. Um, nobody can find him. The Twitter account has been deleted. The Facebook account has been deleted. Fans have been told, contact your credit card company. We've got nothing to do with it. Um, I don't know what to tell you. So, so big time wrestling, no. another indie promotion yeah. um, that is in competition with uh, Extreme Rising said, listen, this dude is a douchebag. The promoter came out today, issued a statement. He said, listen. The Steve O'Neill guy? <laughs> no, no, no. The promoter of Big Time Wrestling okay. came out today and said, "Listen, if you've got Extreme Rising tickets, you're probably not going to get your money back. So, bring your ticket, bring your Extreme Rising ticket to our show, and you can get into our show for ten bucks. That's and really it's cool. Normally a twenty five dollar event. Really cool. Promoter's pissed off. Said that he knew that this was going to happen, and everybody got dicks. So for ten dollars, bring your Extreme Rising instead of paying twenty five, thirty bucks to get in the door. Yeah, we'll give you a discount. We'll give you a discount for, for their fuck up. They're going to eat the money then. For the, they're going to eat the money for Extreme Rising's fuck up. Why? But. Big Time Wrestling feels that if we can draw their fan base in, and it's oh, probably okay, the okay. same fan base anyways, uh, indie, Similar. indie guy, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, but uh, come to our station show. Station in the same, or like, or it's stationed right in Pennsylvania. Okay. They had a uh, Extreme Rising had a double so shot. Probably this yeah. If you're a wrestling fan that's diehard enough to buy an indie ticket for an Extreme, you will probably you go, go over to Big Time Wrestling. And yeah. Big Time Wrestling has a decent card. They've got Sabu. They're trying to book the Extreme Rising yeah, guys. I know all trying, about this shit. I didn't hear none of this. They're trying to give oh. the Extreme Rising guys a paycheck that they're gonna miss out on guys like Rhino, guys like Sabu, yeah. uh, you know, people like that. The Nasty Boys are going to appear on their show. I mean, Big Time Wrestling... Damn, they're still going. <laughs> big Time Wrestling is a pretty big promoter. They brought in uh, Ric Flair. They brought in Ultimate Warrior um, for an autograph signing. Um, i got to be honest here. You know I'm always honest. Thing. Right. Didn't really pay attention to a lot of that story. Did you right. ever get to the point of why he canceled the show? We don't know. Nobody knows. Okay. It's, the, nobody can find him. Nobody knows where okay. he is. He was going to issue a statement. Like I said, he was going to do a, an interview with you know the PWI uh, website earlier today. I hate didn't that wind up website. All right, yeah. Didn't wind up doing it, and uh, nobody can find him. So nobody knows where he is. So it's it's pretty wild story, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyways, uh, let's get the plugs out of the way, and then we'll get into it Monday Night Raw from last night. I know we're How just going to have to go based off <laughs> knowledge, right. man. We'll do, you know. I remember, remember. good remember. This um, fight, I mean, I was massively drunk, too. I don't know how I did Yeah, well, that. how did you get so drunk last night? 17 yes. beers you drank? 17 beers. How'd you get to 17? Because I had, we had two 12-packs. Right. I had my six of the first one, then I had my six of the second one, and then you kept giving me... You said, I gave you, you a couple of mine. left in there, you can have them, so that makes 15. Then you ended up, I ended up, you gave me one of your warm ones, Yeah. and then you ended up coming in right before you went to bed and said, here, here's another one, I'm going to bed. You're right, you're so right. that's two more on top of oh. the 15, that's 17, and I drank every all goddamn right. one. All right, all right, so anyway, um, the official home of WZR-TV Tuesdays, by the way, we're probably not going to be able to do rapid fire, we're going to have to base it off we're live phone calls. All right, yeah. so, so we're not going two hours tonight. But we'll still give them a show. I think we can go two hours still. All right. Well, I mean, we'll see. We'll just go. Bring up some of the news and in rumors. Um, <coughs> the official home of WZR TV Tuesdays, WZRonline.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Facebook.com slash WZR Army, YouTube.com slash WZR Archive, and Twitter as well. Let's go to WZRonline.com. <laughs> navigation bar. <laughs> Top navigation bar. Social media tab. Wait a minute. Um, <laughs> social media social tab. media tab drop down menu it's got all the links to Facebook Twitter and YouTube as well go to Facebook go to WZRonline boy I really we're not all too great uh, go to <laughs> WZRonline.com the official home of WZR TV Tuesdays it's got all the links to Facebook Twitter and YouTube WZRonline.com the official home of WZR TV Tuesdays I know we're having some problems with the website with the loading issues and everything else I'm working on that talking with the server company right now and hopefully we can uh, get that resolved in the uh, in the next few days <coughs> so so Monday Night Raw from uh, last night my man my old hometown um, Baltimore Maryland Baltimore Maryland yeah. Baltimore Ma many shows in that building. UFC's in uh, Baltimore coming up uh, Saturday. same arena I'm guessing Saturday Baltimore Arena. yeah yeah no doubt 
Um, someone in Iraq. I mean, it lagged on and really on did. and on last night, right? It really, really did. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it was because I'm drunk and working. And right. The play-by-play right. play really makes it feel like seconds or fucking minutes, you know. But uh. Right. Right. I still think that yeah that that show was one of those like i said earlier one sometimes three hours goes by like that and, right you know, there's a lot of shit going on it's real cool uh and other times it's like god damn it's still another two hours still another hour it was the latter last night yeah yeah it uh they kicked what it off think of it top to bottom though as a whole uh like you a school remember, letter grader this, or... this is the first show after long wrestlemania build-up which is always they put their best foot forward right. and then the post wrestlemania rolls probably Arguably the best Raw of the year every year. Yeah. Or at least it should be. Uh, and then last week was a Warrior Tribute, so it had special shit there. So every week for the last several weeks has been something, you know, special or cool or whatever. Right. Last night was like the first time where we're like back to normal. Back to normal. Yeah. Right, right, right. But, uh, um, right, like School Letter Grade yeah, or sure. Good, Bad? Uh, school Letter Grade, probably uh, uh, C+. Plus. C+. Plus. I'll say C plus two. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, they kicked it off. Um, first of all, you know there was some some news that came out yesterday, um, earlier in the day. Daniel Bryan's father uh, passed away over the Man. weekend. Um, Can you imagine being Daniel Bryan having the week he just had, <coughs> the greatest week of his life? He gets the fucking title. He tweeted that too, man. That, yeah, you know, said, I've never yeah. been happier in my life. Whatever he said, the best week of my life. You know, he gets the title at WrestleMania in the main event, big fucking moment that everybody's been waiting for, including him. Since he's a kid, then he marries the girl of his dreams, all this and that. They're on their honeymoon. He's got time off for the first time in a while. Gets ready to go back, and bam. Just like Warrior. Warrior had the greatest weekend, maybe not of his life, but certainly one of the better memorable weekends of his life. And then the very next day, bam. I mean, uh, let me. The the news came out yesterday. Uh, for those who haven't seen it yet, uh, Daniel Bryan's father uh, passed away over the uh, over the weekend. Unexpectedly, he had been he was sick. Fifty-seven but years old, yeah, man. Warrior was, was fifty-four. Yeah. Fifty-seven years old. Um, had he been sick? I heard he. I think he was sick. Yeah, it wasn't like he just suddenly dropped. But uh, I heard it was very, very sudden. That. I didn't. know Yeah, he was no, it sick. wasn't. Expe- I don't think that they thought he was deathly ill. But I saw like I pneumonia or something. I don't know. Something like don't that. Know, yeah. yeah. That's the thing. A lot of people get pneumonia, right? People yeah. don't understand. That's the deadly. I mean, sure. that can turn deadly. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so he went on his honeymoon, um, the past week or two, and then, um, Last past week, week. Yeah. um, and then, uh, came back and got the news that his father had passed away over the weekend, uh, WWE.com put an article up yesterday, uh, during the afternoon hours and basically said that, right before Raw? <laughs> a couple hours before, Two hours before Raw, yeah. basically said, uh, you know, that his father passed away suddenly at the age of, uh, 57, I don't think they mentioned the age, but it was, uh, 57 yeah. years old, um, Dan O'Brien wanted to work Raw That's the last part night. That's, that's fucking awesome, that guy <coughs> insisted from what I'm told, like, from but what I heard, were, right. they said, hey, we understand if you can't, you know, blah, 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 and he said, no, 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 I want to, I want to start the thing with Kane and at least get the, the seeds planted that way when I go away the story started and when I come back we can pick it up you know right and I'm sure that meant they had to well, do some late changes to the script because you know what it is though if if as bad as this sounds okay if if I were to die okay I would want WZR to go on somehow some way <laughs> somehow some way I would want my websites I would want somebody to run my websites yeah. I would want pro wrestling scoops I would want WZR online am I in the will is that I can take him I would you are the guy All that right. knows how to do if my job he's not here so next week don't I, I didn't if, do anything I promise I'm not hopefully I'm not hopefully this isn't foreshadowing yeah. where I'm going to I'm going to pass away you know? but um I mean, I would want my websites to go out. I would want the radio show to continue somehow, some way, whether you got another co or, or whatnot. Uh, and a lot of people are like that, where if, you know, somebody passes away, everything should... The show shouldn't, must go on. The yeah. show must go on. Everything shouldn't stop, because I feel that Daniel Bryan, and I'm not Daniel Bryan, obviously, but I, I Daniel Bryan probably thinks that, you know what, my father would want me to go out here on Raw and not stop everything. He would want me to go out there and, and do this. Well, plus because... two, and this is a fucking awkward comment to make, but he's in the middle of this fucking finally after, you know, everybody, all the fans and everything, are, you know, he's our guy, we want him, we want him. WWE finally does it. Right. And the first week, you know, he takes off because of his honeymoon. He certainly can't take two weeks off for all the momentum that he's built, you know, 
Right. Harden the fucking word here died. But it's, but, uh, it's a death of the family. I think WWE would understand. No, no, they would understand. But I'm saying if you're him, he's right, like, shit, of two course weeks not. after my big moment, I'm not right. even there. Like Brock Lesnar, he's losing all his momentum in the street by not being around. Exactly. If he finally gets his big moment, wins the title, and they don't see him for two weeks, obviously it doesn't really affect things that much. Right, right. But maybe he's worried, like, WWE would be like, you know, shit, we got to... I, I like it's. I'm not in the mind of Daniel Bryan, but my guess is Daniel Bryan was probably. Well, my father would want me to go out yeah. here and, and but, do this, and once, in addition to that as well. Yeah, right. but once he was out there, he really looked. He looked shaken. He looked bad. Yeah, he, he looked I don't bad. Say he looked bad. He just looked. He looked emotional. When he came and out, he's and doing he the rubbing of the back the whole time and squeezing the shoulders. You know how normally he does the yes, yes, yes yeah, thing, yeah, right? Yeah, he and he a, looked He looked up. up, took a deep breath. And a then, real deep yeah. breath and, and was doing the yes thing. And when he first came out, when his music hit, and he came out on stage, and he looked up, and he kind of pointed up. Um, I mean, and, and, and you could tell. I mean, he was emotional. And then when he hugged Bree in the ring, it yeah. looked like he was about to cry. Yeah. You know? That's when he really looked torn up. Right, right. So, and yeah. Like you, had the scoop, you got the scoop from your guy that uh, said that that's why they didn't have him talk. Is that he kind of knew that, you know. Basi- basically what happened the shaky is. voice or whatever. Brian agreed. Brian said, I, I want to appear on Raw. We'll set up the Extreme Rules match. Um, and they did it at the very beginning of the show. Yeah. Um, there were a couple of reasons for that, as we put on the website last night. Um, they wanted to, number one, get Kane over as a monster that nobody can, monster. Nobody yeah, can yeah, control. Yeah. Uh, you know, Stephanie McMahon telling him, stop, don't do it, Kane, this, that, and the exactly. other thing. So they get Kane over as this big monster, you know, like the old days that nobody can stop, nobody can control. Exactly. Uh, that was number one. Number two is you've got Extreme Rules coming up in two weeks, three, three weeks. Four, whatever that is. What, what do we got? Okay. 20, yeah, two weeks. All right, so two weeks. So you need to get the world title match up and announced mm-hmm. um so they were able to do that last night on raw basically extreme rules by the way that uh he's in rough shape yeah, man yeah. he is uh poor little jake she, man. Was she must have got back she did take him uh but he's cool. got a he's running 104 temper 104 105 temperature she took him to uh urgent care 104 and they let him go. It was 104. No, she called out. She came in and asked me. She said, what should I do? He's got 104 temperature. He looks like crap. Yeah, he well, if like you go shit. in there with 104 temperature, they should keep your ass overnight at least. Right. Well, I, I told her, I said, you know, call Urgent Care and see what they say. Yeah. Urgent Care told her, you got to bring him in. 104 temperature, you got to bring him in. But then to get there, and basically what they tell you is, well, just let him rest. Let him do his thing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right, right. So... Anyways, but uh, so hopefully he's but he's out there crying now, poor so it might be a uh, I know it might be a rough night. Um, poor guy, listen to him. Um, but uh, so anyways, they they established uh, Extreme Rules the main event. They established getting Kane over as a monster. Uh, when Daniel Bryan, uh, that was also the third thing was a way to write him off television get him, for the get night. Get him out so he can go. With what his do you family. do? Yeah. Three tombstones. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, one on the floor, one on the steps, one on the table. Okay. The table didn't break, so that could have been real bad. I know, that I know. could have been real bad. What do you think would have hurt the most? The table, the floor, or the steps? I'm thinking the floor. It's what do you hard think? floor. What do you but mean? there were mats on the floor. None of them hurt if you do the move right. But uh, well, do you mean which one? If you were, if were to chance, really hit somebody with a tombstone, right? You break their neck no matter would it where be, you do it. But, would um, it be the floor with the mat, the little padding on the mat, yeah. the steel steps, or the table? Well, I'm going to say the steps. talking about Kane's knees. I mean, his knees are either hitting a little pad I'm, on the floor. I'm talking about saying if you were really if, if you injury? were really to do a tombstone pile it driver. Where you did it. Well, what would uh, dropping somebody on their head? It doesn't matter what it's on. If you drop them on their head and it's a solid enough surface, you're breaking their neck most likely. I think the table's got a little bit of give, right? It's got it give. didn't last night, uh-huh. but normally it would give and yeah. bend a little bit. But I was gonna say if you're saying which one has the biggest potential risk for something going wrong, like if it's done the steps, yeah, that would be the table. The table? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because when the table collapses... If it doesn't collapse, and if it does, yeah, you got to fucking maintain control as you're crashing through. Well, that's what I'm saying. If the, if the table collapses, you've yeah. got another two or three feet to the ground, which and you've got to... slip you've a little bit, hey, he could get dropped on his head. Yeah, that's that, true. There's a lot of t- risks there that could go really wrong. That's why I said yeah. that last one could have went... I wish Especially we had the chat. it didn't break, that could have went I know. really, really wrong. I know. I know yeah. what you're saying. Like, yeah, if it was yeah, a yeah. shoot, but if it was a shoot... Doesn't matter where you're doing it. If you right. drop someone right on top, right on the top of their head, yeah. and it's not a fucking cushion or a pillow, trampoline or something, I shouldn't and there's say no this. way for it to bend. You know, you're 
you know, you bend like that. Right. If you're going straight down, then shit, your neck getting broken. I shouldn't say this because it makes Boone nervous as fuck every time I do it. But I take Jacob and I wrestle around with Jacob. I give him the tombstone. Always. I take him up. I take him up. I give him a little tombstone. My thing is, if you don't do that right, he gets, he's getting whiplash or a I got him or up or near my stomach when I'm doing it. When I'm doing it, no, I'm doing it. But child, still. If somebody's going to get me for child abuse. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... We what do you think of them? They, 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 okay, so they do all that, and then they throughout the night give medical updates. He's at the right. hospital. Uh, cat scans. They only are, gave like one medical update. Was two or three. Actually. Okay. Yeah, but right. um, the one the one they said was uh, it's not serious. He's got a a, a, a stinger. A stinger. No, and a lot of people. A lot. There's a lot of words they could have used there, and they I used know. the word stinger. What do you think of that? I can't believe you brought that. A lot of fans, like on the comments section, were saying, "Oh, stinger! That means stings coming." Blah 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 blah. It was the stinger? How many? We've heard well, stinger. All right, I only did that to set you up. I was gonna. I thought you were gonna go on a big rant about. Hey, they could use any word. And we've I heard stinger time. time and time I was like, again. Dude, it's nothing. But I thought. I thought that would be one of those that could send you off no. on a fucking Clark conspiracy tangent. No. Overthinking. Get and out of here. <laughs> no, it didn't mean anything. Obviously. Anyway, so uh, I thought I could fool you on that. And uh, you ain't fooling nobody. You passed the test. <laughs> um. So, anyways, April Fools was. Couple of weeks ago. Yeah, nice try. Uh, anyways, uh, so Daniel Bryan, uh, we put it up on the website. When he returned backstage, uh, there were a bunch of guys and uh, divas around. I uh, basically gave him a big hug and uh, said, you know, keep your head up. Um, everything be all right. Uh, go back home. Well, didn't he wheel him back be on with, stretcher? Uh, I think him a big hug. <laughs> what happens when he gets behind the curtain? Do you think they keep him on the stretcher? Yeah. He gets off that. Hey, everybody! But strapped down. So you think they all stood around and waited for them to? Here you go. Unstrap him. Get him up. All right. Now give me a hook. You know what I'm talking about, <laughs> man. They got yeah, behind. Yeah, they all they got behind the curtain. Daniel Bryan's yeah. fine. He gets off the stretcher. They had a uh, waiting car. Okay. Bags were pretty much packed. Changed out of his gear uh, and immediately immediately left the uh, the arena. Got into a waiting car okay. and took a uh, a flight back home to uh, Seattle to be with his family. So it was basically you open up Monday Night Raw with it. You establish <laughs> Kane as a monster. You established the main event for Extreme Rules, and you write Dan O'Brien off Raw. You get him out of there. Send him home to be where he needs to be with uh, with his family. So All right. that's what they did last night on uh, on. It's hard Raw. to say. I don't know where the hell they went from there. You got I don't the either. internet on your I don't phone. Know. You could load we up had, the um, and give us some notes there. We had the IC title give me matches. Your phone while you're uh, talking, I'll I don't know how to use the internet on here. Do you know how to get to your browser? I know how to get to the browser. How do you not know how to use it? You type the goddamn address in. I, I don't get on it. It's the Droid. You guys know what the Droid is, right? I I don't know. I, I, Let me see it. Here's you looked the, up directions and shit on there before. The yeah. battery's about to die. Oh, here. You know that, shit. But go ahead. Load up the uh, the report again. Okay, there's go there's ahead. the um, We had the uh, the IC um, title tournament yes. continued on uh, Raw, Raw last night. What were the two matches? It was uh, Wade Barrett against Sheamus and Rob Van Dam against Cesaro. Oh, yeah. uh, somebody called up here last week and said... It was Rago. I was thinking of that as they was did it. it. I'm like, that son of a bitch called it. Yeah. He's Somebody new, said. Randy, who always has good Randy. predictions. Yeah, he's always got good predictions or whatever. Uh, Rago, he called that one, yeah. They, uh, yeah, it, it was Rago. He called up and basically said that Jack Swagger would come out during the Cesaro match and screw Cesaro out of the match. Yeah, as soon as he Bust said it, turn, I'm like, that's exactly what they're going to do. Too. Bust in yeah. turn, setting up a match between... Oh, look at you. Look at me. My man. I don't deserve credit, dude. You put the goddamn address and you hit enter and there you go. <laughs> I don't know how you don't know how to do that, but okay. Well, that was good. Yeah. So, um. I'm going to turn the screen off in between so that the battery don't burn, but. Son of a bitch. He's got the raw report up. Wow. Fucking A. All right. Uh, so we come back from commercial break. We had the IC title tournament. It was uh, Sheamus against Bad News Barrett. Uh, Barrett advanced here. What? Save your battery, man. Once you get oh. the quick fucking, oh, here's what happened. I turn it off. So you know. Oh, we got 20%. We'll be okay for a little bit. We'll be fine. Mm. Uh, so Barrett, uh, Barrett won here, so he advances in the uh, tournament. By the way, this was a great match. Was this the match where the fan kept the fans kept chanting, this is awesome? During the commercial, yeah, yeah it was. If you try, we could still do rapid fire, because obviously if you can get there, you can get to Facebook and 
As long as you can load it up on here for me. All right, no doubt. Well, if you know your login, I don't know your password. Oh, that's well. We I got it in there. Okay. I got it on a uh, no. All right. Um, the fans chanted. They were chan- this and is it was. Awesome. It was. It was awesome. a great match, right? Seamus, in particular, the last few weeks have been, he's been having some fucking kick ass match. He had some with Christian. He's before a good Mania. worker, man. He had some with Christian before Mania that were off the goddamn charts. I don't think they got enough credit. Right. Last night, those two put on a show. If you saw those photos backstage of Wade Barrett showing his back, mm-hmm. his back was all fucking scratched up and welted up and beat the shit. Why is it that Sheamus matches? Yeah. I remember a photo the of Sheamus. Physical son of a bitch. And it's funny on commentary right when the match was starting. It was either Lawler, I think Lawler said it, and JBL laughed and agreed, or the other way around. But uh, they're like, yo, these two is going to be physical or something right, to that effect. Right. And JBL's like, ha ha, yeah, yeah, you know, and yeah. god damn, it was, it was. I remember a photo from a couple of months ago of Sheamus. Uh, he was in a strap match or something. It was his back, yeah, right? the strap match, and then there was the one with his arm. The arm I as well. I thought it was his leg, right, right. fucking big, but yeah, or the other way around, was it his leg, I thought it was I don't know, but yeah. Whatever it was, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, Sheamus... Is physical, man. He is, he is, yeah. no doubt. I mean, those chops that Sheamus does, and they're not backhand chops, yeah. they're like forehand, like right? Oh, you're talking about the pounding that he does right. on right. his chest? Yeah, that, that was forearms. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, hey, you don't hold back. And uh, yeah. they did that one spot where, was it, I think it was Barrett up against the ropes like this, and then Sheamus came and fucking threw himself in crossbodies, and they goddamn backflipped over the ropes onto the floor, and there was right. a spot when they landed where it looked like Sheamus' knee was going to fucking break. You know, Twist, remember how you yeah. and Rob did that wrestling match, and you were taking him down, and when, I he, dropped when he was him on the, the way arm down, his arm, he tried to yeah. plant his arms to brace himself on the way down, <laughs> and his fucking elbow popped and then broke, and he was screaming and crying. And rest in peace, buddy. But, uh, yeah. Yo, I love you, Rob, yeah. man. But, God, great, but, uh, call my mom. You guys had the same call thing. Call my so, mom. Yeah, can, yeah, oh, no. somebody call my mom. Yeah, I just said, I'm calling your fucking mom, bro. Probably I'm three calling levels, her. Probably three levels higher voice, too. He was squealing. I mean, oh, you're he squealing. Up bad, but, uh, so I, I called I his thought, mom. Okay. I called his mom, and I said, Mrs. Fiera. <laughs> yeah. You remember I, what his dad said? To I, wait, wait. <laughs> so I said, I am so sorry, but... Rob and I, we were well, messing here's the around, first thing. we before were wrestling. That, before you made that call, yeah, he wanted to ride to the hospital and name it, whatever. And I went right, upstairs right. and asked Adam if he could take him to the hospital. He said, no, oh, get the fuck out of here. I'm not driving to the hospital. He's, he makes fun. Right, right. And then he's, no, he well, wasn't fun. And he said, well, call my mom. Call my mom. He said, call my mom. Please yeah, call yeah, my mom. Call my mom. I said, Mrs. Vieira, I'm so sorry, but... Your son and I, we were we were wrestling around, we were joking. And real and quick, by the way, this is what we would do. We would all do, basically, and this was before UFC was popular, we would basically do UFC matches, only we wouldn't hit in the face. Right, right, right. We'd hit in the body. I remember yeah, one no time, I, it was my only knockout ever I'd wake in history. I'd up bruises a, all over my Only knockout man. in history to a body was I, I got him right in the fucking right. stomach with a punch, right. and he dropped like a fucking right. sack of shit. I lost my breath. Yes, yeah, oh. and there was one time you I, remember ever I, you, I remember I hit you in the spine with a knee. Yeah. And there was, yeah, match over kind you of ever get You ever get that where you get hit or you fall off a bike or something like that and you get it where you can't br- and it feels like you're about to right. die. And a shot to the body uh, is terrible. Uh, That's what people talk. don't understand. Like in boxing or MMA, you get hit in the face. Anybody who's been punched in the face knows it's nowhere near as bad as you think it's going to be. A. B, when you get hit in the body, your brain, like when you get in the face, you're rattled, so you're kind of disoriented, so you're not even as much aware of the pain until after the fact when the adrenaline wears off. But when you get hit in the body, your brain's cl- clear, you're fully fine upstairs in the brain, but your right. body's, it hurts so bad, and your brain's aware of the pain so much. Where you get hit in the pain, face, your your brain ain't aware of the pain right, so much right. in the moment, right. especially with the adrenaline. Don't fucking chop me. I've seen you staring I'm at I'm not. Me. No, right. you know what I'm staring at? What? I never noticed you had an Adam's apple down there. I'm a guy. No, but I don't have that thing that's... Di- I can see it sticking out a little bit you right gotta, uh, I got the double chin. You know, I got the big cheek. You're going to get a little self shape. You, you got a fold of fat. Uh, 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 oh, no doubt. Yeah, no but, doubt. I was looking. I've never seen the end. Grab that mic one more fucking time, bro. Well, you asked. You thought I was going to chop you, so I'm just bringing right. up your ass. Uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah. Call Rob's mom. Do you remember what his dad said when he gets? Yes, I do. So his dad, his, <laughs> his dad, dad is not compassionate. His dad winds up. Uh, his, his, his father winds up, and he says, "You got to the scene real quick before you tell the, the punch, the the the, the punchline, the, the payoff." He's laying on the ground, holding his arm. He's 
fucking bright red. He's I thought screaming. his father was going to kick my he's ass, screaming man. Screaming and crying. I thought his father was going to be like, oh, shit, son, are you okay, blah, blah, blah. All right, all right. And, all right, so there's the setting, and then... The father walks in, and, and Rob is just down and, and screaming, uh, I I, screaming, screaming, agonizing pain. Yeah. And the father says, Rob, get in the fucking car. Yeah. Get in the fucking car. It wasn't, it wasn't so much anger. It was disgust. He was like, man, get the fuck up and get in the car, man. Get in the car. Out here in the middle. Get the fuck up and get in the car. Like, he couldn't Rob says, I can't. Kid. I can't move my arm. I can't move Long story arm. short, his arm was badly broken. He's in that big Barry Bonds fucking metal robot arm Yeah, thing. they put him in a big old thing. Yeah. I got him good. You I, got him good. I got him good. I got him good. Yeah, to connect that back to what we were talking to. When they took that crazy bump over the ropes and onto the floor, I really thought Seamus' leg was going to do what Rob's arm did. Oh, and yeah, like just got the way right. it planted. And then Barrett's body comes down on top of it. I thought his right. leg was fucked. Yeah, no But doubt. he was all right, I guess. What do you think about uh, Hugh Jackman coming uh, to Hugh Raw Hugh Jackman's coming to Raw, week? and that started, uh, I guess they're going to do something with Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler. You ever watch those Wolverine X-Men right. movies? I went you know, to the very, first, the very first X-Men movie in the theaters. And I yeah. rarely go to the theaters, but my roommate, my, my buddy, uh, my brother, Mike, is a fucking mark for that shit. Is he? So he was dying to see it. So a lot we of people are. Yeah, so we went with a couple of girls and we went to see that. And yeah, that was the first time he played the Wolverine and then that got him over. Like, nobody really knew who Jack, who Jack went at the time, I don't yeah, think. Yeah. And that's really what launched him and made him the big deal that he is. They're and doing an angle on Twitter. He's a real fan. Yeah, no, he is. Tell, he he is. really loves the shit. Oh, uh, they're doing an angle on Twitter. Who is it? Uh, Ziggler and Sandow. That's what I was saying. I yeah, it looks like they're going to oh, yeah. do a match with those two. Uh, Ziggler and Sandow. I think you'll have Ziggler and Sandow. Hugh Jackman will be in the, well, uh, the corner backstory. of uh, Hugh Jackman of, of Ziggler now, because Ziggler offered the olive branch. But uh, the last time when Hugh Jackman hosted Raw, he did something with Zack Ryder because I remember he had the headband on. Zack Ryder's headband. Right, right, right. Oh, maybe it was uh, Zack Ryder against Ziggler because what he did was he got up on the ra- apron and. Do a punch at uh, Ziggler. Oh, Mario. that's right. That, that was a good punch, too. Yeah. I remember that. It, it, it was, was a video, and especially if it was a working punch, it looked great. But um, maybe he just did stiff me. I don't give a fuck. You know, it's yeah. cool. You're gonna punch a fucking Hugh Jackman's gonna punch Hugh Jackman. Yeah, doubt. but um, so uh, Ziggler on Twitter extended the olive branches with it, and he like, oh, I forgive you for punching me. You know, we could be friends. Whatever the fuck he said. Right. Uh, and then Ziggler and Sandow saying I'll start fucking with Ziggler. So it looks like right. they're gonna do a match with those guys, and and that'll be Hugh Jackman's thing that that he does. Right. Uh, Evolution arrived backstage in a uh, in a limo. Yeah, cut uh, the commercial the limo break. Pulls up. I'm praying to God Vince walks. Vince, in. yeah, gotta he, be Vince, right? Uh, it was Evolution. Makes sense. Evolution always used to arrive in the limo. Nice clothes, limo. What'd you think of the uh, the promo, man? Triple H, Dave Batista, Randy Orton come out on stage, That's right? Good. Walked out of the ring. Uh, it was very good. I was thought it was definitely good. I don't remember good. it being like outstanding. Or I thought like that. I remember you know it was, good. it was effective. Triple H started things <clears> out, <throat> and then Randy Orton followed it up. And I said, "Oh man, you know they aired a video package in case you forgot. Yeah. Here's what Evolution used to be." Then I thought Dave was gonna grab the mic, and I'm like, "Oh God, here we go, dude. Gonna flub this line, he flub that line." He did yeah, good he did last good. night. Well, I do remember this note. While I was watching the uh, the segment and writing it and everything, um, they still booed the shit out of Batista. They booed him like wiped, crazy. So I know. Even though they're in Evolution now, and that should you know change the way people look. No, at Evolution's a, a heel group, man. Yeah, but no, I'm just saying they still like like no that not a not a oh you bad guys booing. It was like boo, here's fucking yeah. Batista, boo. Right, you know, right, we don't right, like right. you. It's not that we don't keep him like, off the mic. It's not like we want to see you get yours. It's like God, get him the fuck out of here. Boo. Do we need Flair? I think Flair would kind of throw off the uh, the focus of the attention. That's true. He would three on three. Yeah, and well, Flair's that and just kinda... like it would, it might help hurt their uh, heel heat. Yeah, and Flair yeah. was working back when Evolution was first going on, so he could get himself over as a heel. Right, right. now, he's I the agree. beloved legend. I agree. Well, how's that going to help them be bad guys? Exactly. Exactly. Um. Uh. So the Shield eventually comes out here, right? Uh, yeah. Evolution bails. They uh, head to the top of the uh, ramp. Then the Shield. It was basically. You had all three members of Evolution, you know, on the stick for a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah. Then you had all three members of the Shield. I think Dean Ambrose started yes. it out. And then Rollins. Seth Rollins was uh, was was pretty fucking good on the mic. You stole my thing. I was just getting ready to ask. He you. was pretty fucking Who good do you on think the mic. Stole the show, Mike, uh, verbally in that segment. 
Seth Rollins, Seth man. Seth Rollins fucking killed it, bro. He, I was like, whoa. He was oh, good, shit. man. He was good. So, uh, there's times where you get an opportunity, and, and Rollins getting to talk shit to Triple H. I know. And Andy Orton, I know. So the three fucking big guys. What was his line to Triple H? Uh, you're going to do what you always do, and that's... Uh, you're going to do what you always do, and that's... Oh, I can't I remember. Know. I don't have it in here. Uh, something like Cream Puffs. No, they were calling Evolution. They were calling uh, they were calling them Cream Puff. No, they were calling Randy Orton a Cream Puff because oh yeah, you hired us to protect your fucking Cream Puff, Randy Orton. Right, or, right, or, yeah. How about Roman Reigns when he said you got two options? Yeah, yeah number yeah. one. No, he's like in a couple seconds you're gonna have two right. Options. In a I'm couple I'm seconds, drop this mic. Number, number one. one I'm either gonna come up there, or I'm gonna. You're gonna come down here. And no, we're, gonna fight. we're gonna go up there and kick your ass. No, no, no. We're, or you're gonna run away, basically. I thought it was you're gonna. We're gonna drop this microphone. You're gonna come down here, and we're gonna fight. Or we're gonna come up there, and we're gonna take you out. I so you either idea. come to us, or Maybe we're coming to you. I remember it as he's. I'm gonna drop the mic, and you got two options. Right. Uh, and either one of them, you're going to look bad or whatever was the gist. And he's like, I'm, we're going to come up there and kick your basically, ass. Basically, we're going to kick your ass no matter what. Or we're going to come up there and you're going to run away and look like bitches, basically. thought Reigns was great on the mic, too. Yeah, they well, keep this shit short and they, they build it up, build it up, yes. build it up. And then they give him, yes. he's got the fucking impactful line that the fans will pop for. And then they keep it quick quick so he's not exposed. Uh, right. Verbally. So, oh, but he's uh, getting better on the mic, I think. He is, he is. You know? So they drop the microphone, they go up the stage yeah. after uh, Evolution. And then, like, all the fucking guys, if you remember all last the week, the Shield out. had a match against, like, 11 guys. Right, right, 12 right. or whatever it was, and uh, as soon as they dropped the mic, went up the stage, those 11 guys came out. All the heels, basically. All the guys pretty much came out. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had the Usos against the Rhodes Brothers. Boy, I'll tell you what, man. Turn the Original. On. Turn the what? Screen. Oh, burn that battery. Um... <coughs> I'll tell you what. They were going to do Swagger against uh, Cesaro at WrestleMania, okay. and they held it off. Yes. They were going to do Cody Rhodes against Goldust at yes. WrestleMania. They held it off. And then last night, you had the Rhodes brothers against the Usos, and after the match, you had Goldust shoved Cody. So it looks well, like... And had Swagger Cesaro get into it. And right, right. So, right. so it looks it like anyway. you're getting back into both of these feuds. Two matches that were originally planned for WrestleMania... They said, nope, we're going to scrap it, and then after WrestleMania, we're well, going to go with it. bro, a fucking Andre Memorial is more important than fucking, you know, whatever. Right. But, uh, yeah, no, I know what you're And saying. then you're going to destroy the trophy the following night on <laughs> yeah, Raw. Yeah, you built up and made this big thing. And... You know, Big Dick Johnson, remember him? Yeah, the guy that would have the he thong came out. On he came out today, and he says that they asked him, uh, or he was doing a blog or something like that. They asked him about last-minute changes in WWE. And a lot of people, you know, we catch heat on the websites all the time where you got that one wrong, or you said this was going to happen, yeah. blah, blah. You guys got to realize that when they get backstage at Raw, they'll have an original plan, yeah. and then, like, Big, Big Dick, Big Dick Johnson said you know in an interview today you know there's been times where i've been backstage with edge and we're live during raw and five minutes before edge by the way edge remember what we said no 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 now you're doing this but five time. minutes before edge is supposed to go live on raw as raw is airing they change the entire promo and they say edge forget remember about all that in five minutes forget about all that we're doing this now so even during the show, they're doing creative rewrites. So this well, that's stuff the thing changes too. Like a lot of times, so often. When you look at a poster, at the bottom it's always card subject to change. We've almost adopted the style when we write articles. When we write articles, we'll say, this is the plan, blah, blah, blah. Of course they could always change it, you know how they do, blah, 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 blah. blah. So we right. always are cognizant of the fact that we're like, we make sure to mention, this is the plan right now. It always It could always change, blah, blah, blah. And they still say, oh, you got it wrong. You said this and that. Wait a minute. Speaking of posters, speaking of posters, there is an Ultimate Warrior documentary. Whoa, what was that? That aired on the WWE is that that again? Is that documentary. You say it that way? Yes. Documentary. Documentary. Now you said it right. Documentary. It seems like you're throwing an extra. Documentary. Sword. Now you get it. Documentary. Doc documentary. All right. Yeah, you said documentary or something like that. I was like, what the fuck? Anyways, the Ultimate Warrior, Warrior <coughs> documentary. Do I <laughs> got to say it yeah. faster? No, you Is got that? it now. Yes, yes. Ultimate Warrior documentary. Yes. Uh, on the WWE. What did you notice on the uh, Ultimate Warrior documentary? I noticed. Speaking on the what? Of, speaking of posters on the wall. No, on the, on the Ultimate Warrior what? 
Documentary. Documentary. Okay, you noticed what? The Ultimate Warrior documentary. Um, So, they're doing the, and it's a great, great piece. You're talking about the new one? Yes. The one that, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the network. Fucking amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I've watched it twice already. Have you? I watched it yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had such a quick turnaround on it. Right before I watched it. They're saying that they want that to go straight to DVD. They want to No, they want to try and get it on TV. Or television. Yeah, they were, they're trying to get it on... Well, then that means it's going to DVD, clearly. I think the DVD stuff now is mainly network shit. But they would do like a tribute-type DVD. Maybe. Because they just put out a new uh, word right. DVD. Uh, I would say if they didn't put that uh, Ultimate Collection DVD out now, that would probably be included in it. Okay. You know, but, Maybe a uh, bonus or, or something yeah, like or that. Or disc three or, 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 or four or whatever, you know, the documentary. All right, so... Or disc one, usually. But. During this, okay... Um, I believe it's uh, it, it's Warrior comes into Triple H's office at Titan Tower, right? Well, you know where I'm going. With? What? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to. Well, okay. So Warrior, <laughs> Warrior walks into Triple H's office, and on the wall, yes, there's a poster in Triple H's office. Yes, and I think it's for Extreme Rules, Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah Okay, yeah. a bunch of guys uh-huh. on the poster, All right? Guys. Yeah, the thirty guys. And you see this this little yellow. Post-it. Sticky note, yeah, a post-it, post-it note, yeah, sticky yeah, yeah. note, post-it I'm note, over the face. Go ahead, over the face of CM Punk. <laughs> How? And I gotta give credit. I didn't catch that when I was watching it. George right. Romero, who sends this shit a lot on Twitter. Is it George or Jorge? I think it's Jorge. I say George. I'm pretty right. sure it's George. But anyway, either way, I guess you could say either way if you're Spanish. But um, okay. like Jesus and Jesus. But um, yeah, I gotta give him credit. The guy's a fucking bulldog with with finance. He's shit. a bulldog, and he's like, yo, check this out. A lion. He's a lion. Whatever okay. that means. And he sends a picture, and he's like, yo, check out the poster in the background. And I said, son of a bitch, they put a post-it They put note. a post-it oh, note. Fuck's face. Oh, face. I didn't get face, that. man. Caller, yeah. Caller, you're on the air. What's going on? I'll tell you mine. Hey, I got a question for you guys, and maybe you can help me figure this out, because I, I just don't get it. Are you from Canada? I no, I want the joke. What's yeah. your joke this week? I heard oat. Well, evolution is a mystery. No joke. Well, it change that no one sees. Fuck me to fool with history. Yesterday, so long ago. Don't agree with what I know. Tomorrow, got no place to be. I see the line in the sand. I'm just trying to know who I am. Looking back to see where I stand. Evolution, evolution. See my reflection change. No one ever I'm stays the same. But you know the name's beginning. We all know what it means. Nothing ever is what it seems. And for giving us a team. There's no other bad call of other than the game. You want to sing it to the, the song? Go ahead and to? sing it. It's <laughs> on in the background. Go ahead and sing. Yay! <laughs> Get out of here, man. I tried to give him a beat before we had the I heard you were beatboxing. All right, beat right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I almost did it again. Some, some bitch started singing on cue. Some bitch awesome. started singing. That was cool. All right. Um. So, anyways, uh, is that the guy that calls in with the? the he's got the jokes, jokes okay, right? I, I think so, right? I don't know. I, I think he's he Canadian. Canadian. He right, said, right, 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 "Who whooped? Who trying to figure this out?" I said, "Oh." Uh, Emma defeated Layla. Um, debuted her rendition of the Cobra. cobra. She got pink one. She's got the pink one, and then. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was a moment Cobra's at the end love. where like they they were feeling love and JBL's like yo wait a minute this is a PG program you better watch where you put that yeah, cover right? the snakes yeah, were about I mean, to get it on <laughs> I think so dude we had a uh, John Cena what do you uh, let me ask you something before we go to the break and we'll we'll end on this yes. it goes off automatically yeah, but yes every second's precious but anyway <laughs> get out of here it's got 20% it's got an hour left does it yeah Gosh, you know your phone better than alright so uh John Cena right they're, they're they're hyping up a a match with him later tonight and he can face all three members of the Wyatt family later last night he can he can face Eric Rowan he can face no, it was whatever either, it was Luke Harper okay. or Luke Harper and Eric Rowan or Luke Harper Eric Rowan and Bray Wyatt those are the three options did it seem to you when John Cena cut that promo backstage that uh, it was kind of heelish, almost like okay, I know what the fans are gonna. You're probably gonna vote for all three members, and if that's what you guys want to do to me, yeah. then so be it. Is Cena eventually gonna get fed up and, and and say, okay, you put all three members? I listen. I I don't think they're gonna turn Cena heel either. 
But is Cena going to say... I, I'm just... I love it. Is, is Cena going to get fed up and, and come out one of these weeks and say to the fans, you know what? You've been fucking me over. You've been dicking me over. You made me face all three members of the Shield. Clearly, you guys don't like me, but... All three members it, of the Shield? Or, uh, uh the Wyatt family? Yeah. But he sells so much merchandise well, to, for, for kids that would they, well, would that's they the turn problem. him heel, man? Would they turn him heel? That's the problem. It could go one of two ways. He could... Stop appealing to kids. Merchandise sales might go down as a result, although I don't think it would. Um, or not not as dramatically as they would assume. I think it would go down a little bit, but it would still be a huge, you'd still be one, you know, the guy as far as merchandise. But Hulk Hogan's turn, I mean, it's a different climate. You know, fucking, we're talking, this happened in 97 when he did the end of the bill, 98, whatever, 96, I think. Either way, that was fucking damn near 20 years ago. So the climate's different. But when Hogan turned, it worked even better. Right. I mean, son of a bitch, he wasn't doing shit in WCW as the good guy, dripping the t-shirt, yellow and red, you know. When they turned that motherfucker, he was hot as a goddamn pistol. I mean, you know, you, you know just fire pistol. He was on fire. So, I think see, I think what they're doing is they're testing the waters. He was, <laughs> Let's do some teases. <laughs> Let's have Cena talk, like you said, in a heelish manner to a certain extent. And more so than that, I think Bray Wyatt was talking... A is a babyface. Bray's going babyface. Eventually. Yeah, we heard that. Right. A is a, he was talking more babyface, more so than Cena was talking heelish. I don't think Cena was talking that heelish. He said a couple of heel kind of mannerism it things. It was heelish, yeah, man. Yeah, I'll give you that. But Wyatt was, more so than that, Wyatt was talking like a good guy and painting the picture that, hey, maybe you're fucking Cena. He's a monster. I know it. And maybe one day he's going to show when, it and blah, 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 blah. And I'll bring it out of him. I'll be the guy to do it. And more and more, when I come here, you guys sing with me, or blah, blah, blah and all this shit. That's what I what think they were, were doing. I think they're planting the seeds to see how the fans react, react to right, the idea right. of, let's give them a couple well, of subtle hints and see if they bite, and right. if maybe if they want it bad enough, fuck, maybe it we'll do it. It seemed to me like they so were I trying think, to... Real they, quick to finish up, I think, ahead. like you said, will they ever turn Cena heel? I personally doubt Based it. Based on fan reaction. I personally doubt it, but I think they're testing the testing scene. Testing the waters. And right, right. They're right, saying, right. hey, maybe we will do this shit. But, but how about last night? They had so it's Bray. Possible. They had Bray singing, you know, what is it? Got the whole world in Got the hands. world. Yeah. And nobody sang along. No, they last did the night. first. When he did the promo on the stage. Right. They sang with him. At the end of the show, when he was holding Cena in his lap, yeah, it didn't go over that well. When he and was I think on that was because they were annoyed. When he was he, on he kept stage, they over didn't over sing with him. They did, they did. Not in unison. It wasn't Not in a unison. big, loud thing, but you could, right. like half the crowd was singing with them. All right, all right. Uh, and at down. the end of the show, when he did it, what, you know, sitting on his lap like Foley used to do rocking or just in turn, he had seen it in his lap and he's cradling his head. But he sang the same fucking verses over and over right, and listen. over and over. I want you to finish and I think, this. And I think the fans were more annoyed than, you know. I want you to finish this. We're going to be running down uh, WWE and smacking down. Spoilers, we got a... Uh, Using notes from uh, the television team tonight in Hershey, Pennsylvania, the chocolate capital of the United States of America. Just there, some uh, George Romero, Jorge Romero, whatever, uh, sent me a picture of Steve Blackman. Yes, tonight, today. Hershey. Was that today? Today. Oh, then I wrote it wrong. Oops. Steve uh, Blackman is backstage at uh, today's television taping. He's not going to appear right. live, but um, is backstage, kind of visiting. With the uh, with the talents of WWE backstage in Hershey, Pennsylvania today. So, uh, before we get back into Monday Night Raw, uh, I was talking to Boone during the break. You've got you know you want to rant a little bit on uh, not Pat so, Patterson. Not so much a rant, but uh, yeah, I do want to. But it's an interesting topic. It's to a controversial discuss. topic. Yeah, right. Because a lot of people don't I think know a that, lot of people don't realize they don't right. know the details of what I'm saying. So they're right. like, why is he shitting all over Pat Patterson? But if you really go back, do some Google searches, whatever the fuck. Right. The guy's got to pass this, man. How the fuck did he ever get his job? Well, back? you brought up a story a couple of weeks ago about sucking dick or something, right? An old, old, old story. Right? I forget how. I forget why or how. What I, did Piper say about him? On the uh, timeline trail. All, right, all right, right, we'll get into it. We'll get you into it. Wait? Yeah, we'll get into it. Okay. Um, all right, so we're going to be uh, ranting and raving a little bit on uh, Pat Patterson. Up, up over there. 
Um, I do on my telephone. Okay. Yes. Um, but WWE SmackDown opened up with a promo segment. And Vicky Guerrero came out. Uh, Vicky, let me just. Uh, Vicky is still with WWE for yeah. right now. It's basically a situation similar to Eve Torres, where she is going to be taking time off. She is going to be leaving WWE. She's finishing up agreed upon dates. Eventually, at the SmackDown tapings, you're going to see an angle. Um, I don't know if it's going to be next week. I don't know if it's going to be this week or two yeah. months from She'll now. She'll probably go out kicking but and screaming like a fucking... Yeah, like they are going to get rid of her. They're going to fire her. There'll be an angle to write her off television. When that happens, I don't know. But she is going to be taking time off. So, SmackDown opens up with Vicky Smack. Guerrero coming out. Uh, Cesaro was out there. Paul Heyman was out there. Swagger was out there. Zip Coulter was out there. Right. I want to say somebody else, but I don't remember. But, uh... Long story short, she announces two things. A, Coulter, Swagger, Heyman, Cesaro. And Vicky. Yeah. Okay, right. Uh, she announces that the Shield... By the way, if you don't want to hear this shit, turn your speakers down. We'll, yeah, we'll right. give you we'll the thumbs, thumbs up. up. Um, she announces the Shield will be in the main event against 11 superstars tonight. So it'll probably be the same Raw match that they just did uh, Similar to last week. a couple of weeks. Right, last yeah, week. and then uh, she also announced a great debate. Between Paul Heyman and Zeb Coulter. Let me say this. And what did I tell During you? the commercial break, yeah. Matty B uh, said got to me, he said, fish, he he said in, the first thing I said was... First thing he said was, you know what? I'm going to watch SmackDown for the first time in <laughs> a years. A long time. <laughs> in a yeah. long time. Yeah. They announced uh, a great debate between Paul Heyman and Zeb Coulter. Now, so has that, that taken place yet, or is that later on the show? I don't know, because it's hard to tell based on that report I was reading, because right. they did... Verbally spar back and forth right then and there after Vicky. Right. Uh, and it you would think they're going to have podiums. Yeah, but they did because it said they, oh, they did pushed they? the podium over or something. Okay. I don't remember. All right. But, uh, All right. So maybe that was right then and there. But he, And if it did happen right then and there, it, it didn't last long. So. Well, then you only got to watch SmackDown for the first 20 minutes. You got to watch the opener. <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, but uh, that is awesome, bro. Coulter and Heyman. That should be a raw segment, man. That's awesome. That man. should be built up on. Raw. They're doing big things on SmackDown though recently. Like, get, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah, trying to get right? the show over again. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, uh, so they had a, a great debate. We think that that took place in the opening segment, but we're working on confirmation. I'll say fifty fifty. I know they they definitely did a promo back and forth after the Vicky announcements and stuff. Right. Um. But it, it was promoted the way I read it. It was promoted like it to later tonight, but okay. it might have happened right there. So I don't know. We'll have to see. By the way, uh. Okay, well, let me get the rest of SmackDown on so okay. give them a thumbs up. All right, yeah, not yet, not yeah. yet. Um, they did Natalia versus Tamina Snuka. Tamina Snuka, very sloppy. Yeah, we expect. Um, they did a backstage segment with 3 and B talking about how they're in the main event later, because I guess there'll be three of the 11. Right, right, right. Um, fuck, I think there was, was one more match after the uh, the opening segment I there. That I can't if you can give me one name, I can give you the other, but yeah, yeah I can't I remember. I can't, I can't. But, uh, um, but but yeah, so that's what we got for SmackDown. Well, we can give some updates later. I'll, I'll yeah, we'll give uh, we'll give updates. We'll pull it up on uh, one of the computers here, so go. we'll be good to go. All right, let's uh, finish. Oh, oh, oh man, Hacksaw. Did you see that hacksaw, Jim Legend. Duggan? Did you uh, watch Legends House? I haven't. You no. still haven't seen it? No. Man. I saw the highlight clips. This you got to watch. You, this I heard the things really good. And you don't watch Countdown or Rewind or any of that man, shit, I don't dude. Watch you, that, this man. is a, a. You should watch it because this is the best shit WWE's putting out. Way yeah. better than fucking any. I need to watch the Warrior documentary that you. If you don't on. watch that, you're not a wrestling fan. Okay. That's how good it is. I'll say that to everybody watching. I look right, goddamn dead at you. If you don't watch that Warrior documentary, you're not a wrestling fan. Uh you had told me, and maybe one of the, the best things, documentary they've ever. Done. One of the things that I want to watch is Warrior goes to Titan Tower. Mm -hmm. uh, in Stanford, Connecticut. He's all over Titan Towers. And he, he, yeah. he walks in the Triple H's office and he shakes hands. Yes. Vince McMahon, he walks in the Vince's office. No, he doesn't. Uh, where did he meet Vince? They were backstage at the Hall of Fame. At the Hall of Fame? Yeah. That's where they first spoke? At the Hall of Fame? Yeah, I believe. The way they okay. the way they showed it, yeah, it seemed like that was the first time those two... We were like walking. He was dealing with Triple H the whole time, and then the first time he dealt with Vince was back Triple H Fame. said that he I had think. been dealing with him for 18 months to yeah, make yeah. that happen. But you months? had told me... 18 months is what Triple okay. H said. Okay. Uh, we put it up on the website. Months? 18 months. A year and a half. A year and a half to make that happen. Wow, okay. 18 okay. months is what Triple H... I did not, they're not talking every day, but... Well, I'm just saying, again, I didn't know talks, it started that long ago. Talks okay. had started 18 months ago. Son of uh, but right. we were walking to the store the other day, and we were talking about the Warrior stuff. And Vince right, McMahon, the car. We had to walk to the store. You said that Vince was damn near in tears. 
No, not Dan Meritus. He cried. He was in tears. He cried his eyes out. When yeah. he met Warrior at the Hall. Oh, no, 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 no. When he was doing the interview for the documentary after he'd already died. Oh. He was crying in his sit-down, the talking head. We know that Vince was really, really upset with... Yeah, with, it came out during the documentary that Warrior used to stay at their house when he was in Stanford. Uh, and Shane would always tackle him from behind and wrestle him and stuff. Is that why he's so close with, with Linda? Why is he yes, so close? That's why. Yes. And politics as well, I'm guessing. Uh, I have is no there... idea about politics. But uh, yeah, there, there was a politics. closeness between him and Linda in the sense that, yeah, Linda... Because I don't know this for a fact. Don't quote me on this. But I, I think what Warrior didn't have a father. And I'm not sure. Like, actively. Like me. And I don't know if he actively had a mother either. I think he did. But I don't know. But... Uh, it was said that Vince was like a father figure, and Linda, Linda was very him. much like a mother right. figure for him. Right. Yeah. So right. A lot that's of people why he don't know that. See, I wouldn't. With all the with all the the stuff that went down with with Warrior yeah, and, and those man and everything, and there Warrior was a few lawsuits. There was a lawsuit over the name. There was a lawsuit. With Linda. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. That was the one person he could talk to on a on a on a human level. Right. Uh, you know. Uh, it seems weird with all the stuff. There was a lawsuit down. over the name and the rights to the name. There was a lawsuit over the documentary, the first one they put out, self destruction. And in the documentary that just came out, the new one, the good one we're talking about, they show Hulk Hogan's deposition. You know him being questioned by lawyers and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and they're asking him about this and that. Oh, I don't remember. Hogan says. So they said, well, watch this. And they show him saying what he said, and then they ask him, and he says some fucked up shit. Well, they said that Hogan and Warrior also made up during WrestleMania yeah, weekend, it was, where... It was revealed in the documentary that Triple H personally pulled Hogan aside and said, listen, Warrior's having the time of life right now. Him. Don't Not don't fuck with him. Don't stay away. Don't talk to him. Stay, stay away. And he said, I asked Terry as a personal favor... Stay, don't even talk to this. And this alone. was over the Hall of Fame and WrestleMania. Just so WrestleMania, oh, yeah, he finally talked to him backstage at WrestleMania. No, no, no. But he said, Boone's, let him get through the Hall of Fame. And then, you know, because that's, that's what Boone. What Boone is talking about is Triple H basically a couple <coughs> of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, Triple H went to Hogan and basically said. As a personal favor to me. As a personal favor to me. Let Warrior come in here. Let him do the Hall of Fame. Let him do WrestleMania. Yeah. We'll bring him out. He's having the time of his life. Yes. Avoid him. Stay away from it. And then after it's over, let's try to patch things up. No, no, this, no, no. Not so much after it's over. Let's try to patch things up. It's just like if you want to patch things up, please, as a person favor to me, wait till after he gets his Hall of Fame and do, let him do all that. And then right, you know, don't right. fuck with him before that because there's a unsettled. There's not a lot of. Good feelings between you guys, or there's still issues, whatever. Uh, don't, Basic, don't basically, fuck with him, leave him alone if, until if after his induction. To, to Hogan, if you come across Warrior, let Warrior talk to you and just yes, yes, yeah, just no, be, no, no, no. be be friendly with Warrior. Don't no. don't try to piss Warrior off. Don't uh, uh, listen. Steer clear of him. Steer clear Period. of him. And no, if you no if nice you come on that, just don't even if, talk to him until after. If you come across him during WrestleMania weekend. Let's keep it civil. Let's try to make him feel. It was. Uh, I, I don't like it. when I make you sound wrong, but no, he. It was no. If you come, it was don't come across him. Okay. If you see him, keep walking. Leave him alone. You know. D- not that I'm saying that was even said. I'm just saying, don't don't fucking even talk to him until after he's inducted. Right. Let him have his thing, and then you know afterwards whatever. But at least let him have get up to that point before you. If you if you want to talk, and this is speculation, but it, it was basically don't talk to him. Until right. after the Hall of Fame, but if you're Here. triple, if, if you're triple H, him to, when you do talk to him, be nice. There was nothing like that. Um, although I'm sure, Hogan I'm sure knew. Triple H is is and and Hogan probably knew is what I'm trying to say. That's is correct. Hogan probably yes. knew. Hey, listen, if I do come across Warrior, yes. Listen, just He's basically, his moment, be respectful. This is his moment. Yes, yes, exactly. I'll agree with this that. This is his moment. Hey, listen, and they get it on him. camera. Do they? The first time they see each other, they get it on camera. And well, what do they I do? guess it started off camera. Right. And then the cameras walked up, and Triple H, to his credit, even said Which on Triple the documentary, H there when no, they, okay. but he even said on the documentary, uh, they were talking, and the cameras walked up, and he this, said, man. it's amazing. They yeah. get, they, you get to see I need so to watch much it. shit. You Everything know, you're saying, no idea. it's brand new. It's, yeah, it's brand amazing. new. I mean, the first and half is his career, but there's a lot of Sting shit in that first half. Yeah. But the second half is what you'll really dig, because it's all... Access you can't right. believe backstage at all the Raw Hall, Hall of Fame WrestleMania Where they stuff. show them coming Everything. face to face, right? Yeah, right. Uh, but basically I, the I Hogan Warrior that. conversation happens, but it's off camera, and then the cameras walk up in mid-conversation, and Triple H says in his talking head interview on the documentary, 
he says they both realized that cameras were on them, so they kind of changed the way they were acting. Right, Whatever right, the fuck. Right. They, they basically were nice because oh, cameras Triple H were watching. admits that. Yes. So it's the real... I mean, It's, it's a shoot of really? all time. It's the shooter shoot. I mean, I gotta it, watch it, that. they're very honest in the documentary. You got a video of that? Yes. The, uh, I'll upload it for you if you want it. Um, it's oh, very honest. That. 80, 85% honest, because there's still some shit in there where, they, you can where tell. Vince still talks about how he no-showed stuff, or about how he fired, a, or a, a warrior held him up right before, uh, I think it was WrestleMania 7, or SummerSlam, I forget. I, I, I'm where does Vince start crying during the he interview? He starts crying, he cried a few times, uh, the main one that really got to Do him, you see tears coming oh, down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you That's not really? unusual. If you watch documentaries, Vince cries a couple times. In it. When Does he talks he? about his dad, when he talks about... There's a couple times. But, uh, I didn't expect that. The, the one that really got him was uh, Warrior gave him a present. Right. He, uh, Vince was in gorilla position at the Hall of Fame. Uh, and right before Warrior went out for his speech, and, it, and, I, and if you want to know, I'll, I'll tell you, um, Triple H cried about something that happened right after that, and it was back to the Hall of Fame also. Uh, when, when telling That's the story, really, if you haven't seen this, you, yeah. all of you and I need to watch this shit. Because if you don't watch saying, it, you're not a wrestling fan. Yeah, period. Yeah, it's pretty. Period. Sounds it's pretty amazing. Pretty fucking good. Um, but uh, the thing that really got to Vince and Jazz was uh, we were giving him a gift when he was in Gorilla behind all, uh, backstage Hall of Fame. The gift was the book, and I'm, everybody knows it. The Little Engine that could. Right. Was the book. And uh, the, I guess. The children's book? Yeah. Okay. The reason being, Vince said early in Warrior's career, uh, a couple things. Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, he said WWE is like the little engine that could. Nobody thinks we can do it. We're going to do it. No, nothing's going to stop us. We're right. not going to give up. Or we're going to keep trying and we're going to make it. Right. Uh, even though nobody thinks we can, even though everybody thought they could. But uh, Vince and, broke down after that, huh? And he said Warrior is the same way. You know, he, he's the, he doesn't take. He's, I, you know, et cetera. Right. Warrior gave him the book, and when he gave him the book, Vince, the thing that made Vince start crying was like, he's like, wow, he's like, because he said when Warrior gave him the book, he he said when he's looking at the book, he's like, I know there's some meaning to this, but I can't, he's like, can't figure it out. At it, I can't right. remember what the meaning is. Right. And Warrior told him, and and then he started breaking down when he was explaining that I was telling him this shit back in the day, and he's like, man, it's unbelievable that while you're, you know. You're telling somebody this way back then, and you think they're a certain way. You realize years later when he does something like this that man, they were listening. All they were long, listening, and, and they really knew. meant something to him. Right, right, and right. They right. remember it all these years later because it really meant something to him. And he's right. like, and then he says, "You don't know what you got till it's gone," and all that. Right. And it was very, very, very emotional. Really. Uh, for me, the most emotional thing is they interviewed uh, Warriors young kids backstage at the. Uh, I want to say Hall of Fame might have been Raw. Oh, they had his kids on there, did they? But before he died. Yeah. Before he died. Yeah, he, they were backstage and oh, it was really cool. But talking like, about he, their yeah, father, yeah. 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 Ooh, fuck yeah. that hurts when you watch that. But uh, and then you watch him come out and you you could see how much he cared about those kids, yeah. brothers. And they illustrate girls. that in the document. They 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 make sure they don't show much of his Hall of Fame speech. They 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 do pretty much just show him saying you know he loves his kids and this and that. The thing that made Triple H cry, and I thought it, I. Because you were saying maybe Vince was just putting on crocodile tears. And I was telling, when we were walking to the store, I'm like, no, no, no. It was, if you watch it, you can tell he's serious. Right. Um, but, and then, like, just to be nice to you, uh, you know, because you, you get your feelings hurt when I say you're wrong about something. But uh, I was just saying. Guy says I got chubby cheeks and a double <laughs> chin earlier <laughs> tonight. The motherfucker. <laughs> but uh, I, I said to you to be nice. I was like, maybe Triple H was putting on crocodile tears. Cause, but here's the thing. On the documentary. You might come off with that impression because he's all oh, really he does that kind of. But thing. you don't see tears. You can tell he's emotional. All right. The thing is, they don't show anything after that on the uh, Legends Roundtable they did on Warrior, which had DiBiase of all people, which was just fucking in bad taste. But uh, because DiBiase said all that bullshit about him recently, you know. Right. Um, but anyways, they during the Legends Roundtable they would show clips and stuff. And wait, 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 wait. The DiBiase during the the round table was he sucking up and he was the Warriors yeah. that even after the recent comments. Yeah, really. Basically, All right. yeah. I mean, All right. there was certain things he would say that was like, God, you're you're you're, you're just you're kind of a dick. You're, no, you're just or you're just saying it because he's dead. Right, right, right. right. Uh, and there was other stuff where it was like, yeah, you know, he don't mean that. But um, right, right, right. okay. During the doc, the the Legends of Round Table thing with DiBiase, you know, and it was Booker T and Sergeant Slaughter, which mm -hmm. again, Sergeant Slaughter would be another guy like, wow. Right. You know, but um, okay. they would show extended 
clips from the documentary that didn't air in the documentary. You could tell it was from the documentary because you would see Triple Hold on, you know, doing that, and then they would show continued footage, extended footage, and you could tell Triple H was legitimately emotional. He was upset because right. what had happened there was backstage at the Hall of Fame. They uh, they all right. So Warriors at Gorilla. They're doing the uh, introduction, Linda McMahon, then they show the video package or whatever the fuck the sequence is. I don't remember if the video package was first, then Linda, or Linda, then the video package. He's watching the video package of his career that they put together, uh-huh. and he's you know he's got his arms around his daughters, and he's watching, he's got this big smile on his face, and Triple H mentions that you couldn't, he had a smile on his face the entire week. You, you couldn't, couldn't wipe, wipe it off. off. Right. He says, while he was watching how proud he looked with his daughters watching that video package and shit, he walked up to him, and they show the clip of him backstage, Triple H walking up the warrior, whispering in his ear or something. You can't hear what he's saying, but he explains in his talking head segment that I walked up to warrior and I told him this whole long ass process, which I guess makes sense that you said it was eighteen, 18 months. months no, right. he said it was all worth it for that to see how proud to you look with, with your daughters, daughters watching your 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 yourself being honored. He said that it. Daddy. It was all worth it for, you know, he does something like right. that, and like you could tell it's it's legit. So, amazing documentary well, airing right now. For Triple H's credit, Triple H has his own girls at his house, Absolutely. and he probably knows how much those daughters yeah. mean to him. Becoming a father changes you. And how much, yeah, yeah. right, right. And how much, softer. how much his daughters mean to yes. him, and that, what's, if Triple H wasn't here, how much his daughters would, you know, I, he, he sees it. I've got daughters as well, so I know the feeling. It was basically, of, of especially having, because they weren't around when he was having his career. Their young daughters, they weren't even around when he was wrestling. They were born after he was right. done, basically. So it's right. like for him it's to the stand same there, H, for him to wrong. stand there Triple and have his daughters wrong. see right who he is as far right. as his what he's accomplished. It's like wow, they get to see like oh my my daddy's a real right. fucking legendary Man. guy, you know. Listen. And for him to be that after, proud and stuff, you know. After quick, hearing though, this the documentary guy. documentary's airing on the That's, WWE Network right now. You have to watch it if you're subscribed. If you're not, WB Sports, our uh, stream site. Do they have it up? I don't know if they have it on VOD yet, but they, anytime it airs, like if it's in rotation on the network, because every day we put the schedule out of what's on the network. Right. If it's on the schedule, go to WB Sports. Whenever it's airing on the network, it'll be on WB Sports because they okay. stream the network. But uh, if, okay. Or find a download. Find a way to watch it. After listening to that, it's I mean, amazing. Listen, I hadn't heard all that. Until You've never right really now. watched any documentaries. I, I haven't. You, I, I got you to watch part ECW. of ECW. Part of Punks when I first moved here. Yep. Did you watch ECW? I watched the entire ECW. I've seen ECW from top to bottom. The and rise and fall of ECW. I've seen the rise and fall. No, of the, yes, I have. I saw when? the rise and fall of ECW about a year ago. And then the punk one. I don't think you did. Yes, I did. I saw the entire rise and fall of ECW. And then you were out there in the living room yeah, watching the CM Punk uh, documentary. And and and, and documentary. They, were, they were talking about Ring of Honor. They brought up ROH yeah, and they showed it. in the punk documentary. Yeah, and they showed right. clips. You watched ECW before I moved here. Yeah. Okay, okay. I watched I like, ECW over here. a year ago, about okay, a year okay, ago, okay, okay, okay. about a year, uh, how long have you been here, eight months, ten about, months? Yeah, and, then, and how long was, was the ECW documentary, an hour, two hours, or three hours? I don't, I don't Do you remember like, it being real goddamn long, or like, alright, it's an hour documentary like they always like, do? like, yeah, I don't know, two hours, an yeah, hour or two? It was like two? two, two and a half hours, yeah, it was real long, they cover everything. I Amazing watched the documentary. ECW documentary, I would man. even venture to say, before the Warrior one... You might have to say that was the best one. If you saw that, I can't believe you wouldn't want to see the other one because you're like, wow, this is amazing if you really watch it. He said, dude, I was on YouTube.com You watched the WWE produced one because there's a bunch of ECW documentaries. There's Barbed Wire City. There's Forever Hardcore. The Barbed Wire City one's the one that I want to go back and see because that's more... I mean, the WWE produced DVD, they're going to they're gonna tell the story that they want to tell. No, they got even, Heyman even, doing it. I know they had Heyman. Yeah, yeah. I know they had so Heyman. being honest when he's... Anyways, yeah. but I wanna, I, I'd like to go back and see the uh, the barbed wire documentary that they did. Uh, <laughs> even like even though word. that they had, uh, For, they, oh, had a, awesome. they had all the reporters on the barbed wire documentary. Yeah, they had all the uh, the Mike internet Johnson reporters, and right, right, right yeah, yeah, Keller, Keller and all, all those yeah, guys yeah. that were on there as well. But we weren't available for interview. They didn't. I guess they not. begged us. I guess said, hey guys, but uh, we're, we're rock stars, you know, you didn't pay us. Enough. And then I'd like to go back and see the CM Punk DVD because the only one that uh, that that know, one I don't I was... think that's is that good. To be really? Honest. I didn't. But the like fact it. that they brought up Ring of Honor during that, 
That's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah that part's cool. Yeah. But like, no, I like I, I like the stuff from childhood. They showed uh, Punk and, like and Ryan Daniels from back in the day on that DVD too. Yes, but yeah. I like the stuff from yeah. when I was a kid because when you're a kid and you're watching it, it's it, for me at least for a very long time wrestling was real. So to go back and hear the behind the scenes stories of shit I remember as a kid, it's like wow, that shit was going on at the time. Blah 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 blah. blah. Right. So the Punk one, I'm like, I'm fucking, I'm an old man by the time he starts in WWE, you know. So. All right, let's. Anyway. Uh, we got to finish up uh, Monday Night Raw yes, from last night. We had. Uh, uh, where'd we leave off? We had the Usos and the Rhodes Brothers. Oh, Cesaro's new theme song sucks. Terrible. It's almost like right to center. All right, they had the fucking the fire engine type thing. Whatever, yeah. Whatever, yeah. Um, so we had Cesaro. He comes out. Um, they had the uh, the second match. Uh, it was him and Rob Van Dam. Yes. <coughs> what do you think about RVD uh, winning this? I mean, Rygal, like we said earlier, uh, Jack Swagger came yeah, out. Yeah, he can win it because Cesaro switching over to to the real Americans fighting each other finally. Um, but wait a minute, sorry, I, I'm, I'm wait, wait, wait. That, they were gonna do okay. So they were gonna do Cesaro against. By the way, talking about SmackDown spoilers yeah. earlier, you were looking for that match that we skipped out on, and that's what we're gonna get into now. They're gonna well, do they Cesaro. Wait a minute. Off. They're what gonna do now? Cesaro against Jack Swagger, right? That's the upcoming match. They announced that on SmackDown this week, yeah. of all shows, SmackDown I told you my is thoughts. where the Cesaro versus Jack Swagger match is going to happen. But it, That's the match in the SmackDown tapings tonight that it, we missed out but it on. it won't happen. It did happen. No, 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 no. That didn't happen yet. That didn't happen yet. No, because I would remember the finish or whatever. It was, uh, no, it was broken up by the Shield. That's right. The Shield came out. Yeah. And Roman you had Reigns. said, yeah. you had said last night... During it, I said, why would they have a match yeah. that they were going to do originally at WrestleMania? Yeah. Why would they announce that on Raw for SmackDown? Instead of saving it for pay-per-view. Since it's they did it on SmackDown tonight. It was after the opening segment yes. with Vicky Guerrero, Cesaro, Heyman, and everybody else out there. Uh, Swagger and Coulter as well. They just give you a taste. After that, they go to a commercial break. They come back and they do Cesaro versus Jack Swagger. But kind of, they just gave you a taste. That's what I said last night when right. you, when you, when you mentioned it to me. I said they're they're announcing it because they're just going to give a little. They're going to give a, a little, false finish. little jerk off. They're going to give you a little tease. You know what I mean? They're not going to let you fucking come. They're going to do yeah. a they're going to do a false finish. <laughs> Would you? not so much a false turn finish. Turn your speakers as down. A, turn your speakers down real quick. Not but, so much a false finish as you know. Here's what it looks like. Uh, but you don't get it yet. Right, right. You're, you know, wait for the paper. What about uh, The Shield, of all people, coming out? Yeah, but and, I'm uh, sure that'll make sense as uh, SmackDown goes on, or they're setting up a match for Raw or next week's SmackDown, you know, uh, Something like a that. match to promote or whatever. Right, you know, right. A, a fucking match. But, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I thought it was interesting. I'm like, why do they have The Shield interfering? Like, what's their motivation to come out here and beat, because they beat up Jack Swagger? Right. Basically, right. um, thumbs back up. What about the uh, the backstage segment on Raw? It was uh, Cesaro and Rob Van Dam backstage. Cesaro basically came yeah. up to him and said, "Hey, listen, and you wouldn't you wouldn't have won that match mm -hmm. if it wasn't for Jack Swagger." Or, yes, you're right. Cesaro says, "You wouldn't have won that match if it wasn't for Jack Swagger coming out and screwing me yeah. uh, tonight." The uh, Paul Heyman, uh, Rob Van Dam actually cut a promo and basically. Took a subtle, you actually a not so subtle it was very obvious. shot. Yeah, talked about uh, you came the only, in and the only you thing thought you thought. Uh, can I say it? you thought that it was one of your Clark conspiracies where you're overthinking? No, I and said, then I, told I, said, you, I said, dude, no, you are absolutely right on this one. That was a clear shot at Heyman in the old I ECW. I said, did you see? Did you see the shot at ECW? Cesaro says, or Rob Van Dam said something along the lines of, "The only thing that matter in life are checks." Uh, I I forget your house, the, the, you, you, your house, checks and and the future, else. the future, future maybe? Okay. and and the house is and it the was checks. Paul Heyman's house. It was Paul Heyman's house. Yeah, they were producing the checks, in his basement. The yeah. checks bounced. Okay, at the end. And the future, the yeah. future was there is no more. Well, that name. The dead. future was the guy still think he's W's alive and then Heyman walks out on a Raw as the new replacement for Jerry Lawler as the announcer. Right. So right. the motherfucker, you're telling us everything's all right. Now you're on WWE TV debuting. <laughs> exactly. exactly. What the fuck? All right. Uh, we had uh, kind of. There's a lot of details we won't, I won't bother with. Right. Time, but uh, yeah, that's basic. We had uh, Paige defeated Oksana. Uh, bunch that of submission, new moves. That submission finisher of hers yeah. is amazing. She's got a couple. It's uh, the... the 
She got the Paige Turner, but that's not Paige a submission. Turner, that's and what then it is. it's an inverted or modified scorpion lock, or something, whatever they call it. And then uh, the it's main amazing event, amazing looking, and I wouldn't want to take it. It looks like it hurts like a son of a bitch, especially for a woman. Right, right. Not to be sexist, but god damn, that looks like it hurts. That's made why event she raw. quickly tapped, let me go. You know, main event of raw was uh, John Cena against the fans voted all three what members like of uh, of it? the Wyatt. Family. That's it, man. All right. Uh, all three members of the Wyatt family, the fans voted to. Yeah, you knew that. What's gonna happen? And no, oh, Alexander Cena. Rusev had a thing. You skipped something there. What the? Uh, I don't have Rusev, Rusev had a match there. with um with the uh, fuck. Who did he squash? He he beat somebody there. Oh, it's not in there. Oh, I remember Lana looked goddamn good again. Um, Alexander Rusev defeated uh, Sin Cara. Sin Cara, yeah, and, and he was selling for Sin Cara a lot, which I thought was a mistake. If he's supposed to be the killer squashing guys, and his match was announced, right? Have him go out and squash yeah, and the shit been. out of him. And his right. announcement of the match is a handicap: uh, him versus r truth and Xavier Woods, right? Uh, right. Extreme Rules. But uh, yeah, they had him selling for Sin Cara a couple times, right? And I'm like, right. damn, I don't think it's. I think it's too early to have that guy selling if you want him to be this unstoppable super athlete character. I got to tell you, man, like Alexander Rusev. I think he's a flash in the pan, man. I think they're going to try to make him into a monster. He's going to fail. Joke, yeah. Then he's going to be. He's going to turn into a jobber. It's the same thing. They're going to call him Ad- comedy guy, comedy something like that, dude. Yeah, yeah. I it's think the so. same thing. Adam Rose is going to come up. They're going to call Adam Rose no. up. Uh, you I think Adam Rose has got it. Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas doesn't know. have it. I'll, know. I'll give you that. I don't know if he doesn't have it. I don't think WWE will think he's got it. Adam Rose. I think Adam Rose is going to be like one of those cult guys. That people just dig a certain kind of the audience will dig, and ah. it'll be a loud enough all, part of the audience that he'll have his people that that, that dig him. Adam Rose, if he can I, work, can he Adam work? Rose, you watch NXT and stuff. Can Adam Rose work? Adam Rose is a good worker, okay. dude. But Adam Rose so then, yeah. is going to be the next guy. He's a partier. This that. I'm telling you, Bo Dallas, number one. They've already tried it once. They brought they him up. Lame game they had too. that Bo leave. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Blah. Okay. Inspirational. They brought guy, they whatever. brought Bo Dallas up once. It failed. Okay, they put him right back down in NXT. I'm yeah. telling you, well, Adam Rose brought him up. They didn't Adam fully Rose, bring him up. They're trying to bring this guy up as a partier, and he's got the party yeah. us. This like the ex. Telling guy. you, <laughs> Adam Rose is the next Fandango. He may you know be what? a it hit. Could be. It could he be. Maybe a hit at first, could be. Could be. and it may get over at first. You're right. But then it's gonna fizzle out. So Bo Dallas. That's the perfect example. Bo Dallas Fandango, is gonna fail. That's the perfect example. It could be that Bo Dallas is gonna be. fall. Fail. Adam Rose is gonna fail. And Alexander Rusev is going to turn into a jobber. You got three new jobbers on the you, roster. You could be very right on that because Von Nago is a good worker too, and he was damn over it's at a first. Great work, and man. they kind of gave him something. They let him beat Jericho, maybe, you know, and stuff like that. But uh, they decided he's a jobber. Jericho and, wasn't happy about that, yeah, by the way. Kind of, yeah. And they and they made sure Not he kinda, was. He wasn't happy. Kind but, of, okay. and they made sure he was kind of, and they made sure. Don't he was tell a me, kind of. Jericho me. came out. You listen to the podcast. Jericho came out in an interview. You listen to this podcast. No, I don't listen to the podcast. But I Jericho do. came out in an interview. Well, then maybe he says something different in the he podcast. He wanted to work with Ryback but, that year. Okay, but when so Jericho he was disappointed, but he he said at the end of the day, I, I don't really care, you know, because it's a part timer. Exactly. But when he cut that, he came out in the first interview post WrestleMania, and he said he wasn't happy. Job in a fan dog. If he's changing his tune now, so be it. But in that first interview, he admitted that he wasn't happy. So maybe, okay. maybe the fact that he's changing his yeah. tune now, maybe he wants to remain on good terms with WWE. But the, he doesn't want to throw the guy under the yeah. bus. I don't know. Uh, but whatever. But yeah, the point to all this is. I'm, I was of the opinion, and I just have this feeling that Adam Rose is going to have a cult right. following because of the character that they got him with. I think there's a segment of the audience that's like, yeah, that's kind of like me, partying. All right. Uh, but the I fan angle comparison real quick, like you said, I didn't really think of that. Now that I'm thinking of it, you know what? Hey, if put it this way. You could be as over as Rover, like Daniel Bryan proved. If they don't get behind you and make you over, right. doesn't matter how much the fans hey. like you, 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 if they want you to be a nothing... You're nothing. Hey, the night Fandango after... Fandango was over. They made sure he was nothing because they didn't think he was over. Adam the Rose night... would be over, and if they want him to be nothing, doesn't matter how over he right. is, he's nothing. The night after WrestleMania, when Fandango defeated Chris Jericho? Yeah. Do you remember that Raw? Everybody's in the dude, subway. Dude. Everybody's in the subway. Yes. They're chanting this, that, and this. They go over. And when he would go to England, go, wait a minute. Massively. They go over. Uh, they go overseas yes. the week after. The crowd is over, over. Huge. They come back to America and they're in like. 
God, I always bring up... They're in, like, Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Something like that, dude. Whatever. And the crowd went, wah, 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 wah. Ever since kind then... Of, yes. Ever since then, Fandango's been nothing. He's the, been a jobber. The thing Adam was, Rose is going to come out. He's going to have this cult following. But the thing was, WWE killed this push. Exactly. They, 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 all right, push. Maybe the whole arena wasn't doing wah, wah, wah. But know. there were still people doing it. it but, and if WWE would have ramped it up, more right. people would have done it the next no week. Doubt. No doubt. But when they started going this way with them instead, <coughs> right. less and less people are doing this. And, you know. Adam Rose. Sometimes it's undeniable. Like Daniel Bryan, they fucking try going this way with them, and th- there's just something and about his connection out. with the audience. Maybe that'll happen with Rose. Maybe that'll Very happen. Very possible. But they could hype up with the vignettes. Adam Rose, he's coming, he's coming. What he's do you think of the vignettes? Beer. He comes on board. They're fu- I love them. They're great. They're, they're, they're awesome, bro. Yeah, they're I, awesome. I, I, I wouldn't say awesome. They're, they're, they're in the tour bus. There's smoke there's coming funny, out of the bus. Or, yeah, there's right. a no funny, doubt. There's this and that. They could build them up. Easter, you know. They could build them up. Everybody's excited <laughs> for his debut. He gets over the first couple of weeks, and then one or two crowds... In Omaha, Nebraska, or in Dothan, Alabama. Dothan, Alabama. Poughkeepsie, New York. Poughkeepsie's a great crowd. Don't shit on Poughkeepsie. Just because you know Poughkeepsie. Don't shit on Poughkeepsie, bro. (laughs) Come on, man. That's uh, old school ECW, man. Yes, it is. Yeah, and Mid- WWE, they were over there a lot. In Mid the, Hudson uh, Civic Center. Yeah. Mid Hudson Civic Center. Call you live on WZR TV. What at? Yeah, you're talking about what killed Fandango's push. What killed Fandango's push was the concussion he got right, right before right. payback when he was supposed to challenge for the IC title. He's That's right. true. You're That's right. true. Yeah, you know what? He, was, he got he, that concussion. Out of state, right. out of mind. Once you're off TV for a while, yeah. And then when they came back, they didn't go with him again. You're right. They kind of just leveled him off as a mid guy. Well, that's happened to Christian a couple of times as well, where they've had yeah, plans for Christian. Of, yeah. Even with this this recent IC title tournament, yeah. they had plans for Christian, and then once but he, again, he he's got not a new guy that can. Let's see how far we can go. He's like a guy that's, that's got a ceiling already determined because he's a, he's been around so long. But I, yeah, he's right. I forgot about that. That's him. a good point with uh, Fondango, man. Absolutely. Anything else, bro? That's it. What? Cut him off. He's Thanks for the call, bro. Appreciate it. He was right. listening to his radio. If you guys want to call up live, it's 518-712-3070. 518-712-3070. So Monday Night Raw. Uh, Monday Night Raw. Hello? Hello? Guys? Oh, I have a question. No, uh, so... Listen, at the end of Raw, uh, Bray Wyatt wound up hitting the uh, Sister Abigail yes. on John they, Cena. The fans voted for was the over. three on one. Right. Uh, and then you know, they pretty much squashed him the whole time. Cena didn't get any offense until the very end. Look what time it is. Can you believe that? Time is it really? the second hour, man, right? I didn't even get to the pattern. So there. I just will save that. No, we're going to talk about it next. That's next. I, I don't want to end that. on that note. All right, what about UFC from this past weekend? UFC from this past weekend. Is there really even that much to talk about? It wasn't that great of a show. Wasn't that great of a show, but yeah. things get into Pat Patterson. The Pat Patterson thing. You got twelve minutes. Twelve minutes. Yeah. All right. Um. All right. So we'll listen. Sister Abigail on John Cena. Raw went off the air last night. Yes. Uh, the whole world in my hands. Bray Wyatt yeah, was singing. He sang too many verses, and, and I think that's what made the fans so. Like, tell oh, us oh. about some Pat Patterson, right? We I don't know, know what you that. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll start it out. Okay. So last week you came on here. No, not last week. It was a couple weeks ago. I thought it was last week. No, no, no. All right, so Several Pat Patterson, before. there's a story going on in the locker. It's been known for years, right? That there's back nothing in the day, current, current about what I'm talking about. Okay, there's no story. Yeah, there's nothing going on right but it's, now. But it's interesting. Where Piper, that trailer for the timeline of WCW, yeah, 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 right, yeah. came out uh, yesterday, right? Take one more phone call. Right. Call you live on WZR TV. What's up? Yeah, what's up? How you doing, man? Not bad. Are we uh, live right now? We are live right now, man. What's on your mind? Rock and roll. So uh, here's what I want to say. I fucking hate this Emma character. Regardless of uh, whatever push she's got in NXT, I think it's uh, I think it's utterly ridiculous. I think it's not going to last long. I think there's no longevity to it, and uh, it's a complete fucking waste of time. That's that's my feeling too, man. What's is he is he's about talking about Adam Rose, man? Okay. Adam Rose is is going to come up, right? That's who you're talking about, Adam Rose, right? Oh, uh, I'm talking about Emma, but I'm, I'm not... Oh, right. Emma, okay, Emma. Okay, okay. No, what All right, my He said that the, the, the Emma did, character uh, is a complete waste of time. It's a goof character, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are uh, all excited about Emma. 
Well, you yeah, know what the no, problem is, man? Is is Emma them. Emma down in NXT was a great worker, right? She yeah. was, I mean, she was pretty good for a, for a diva down in NXT. And then they bring her up and they bring her into this corny gimmick, and it's kind of sad. I mean, they're not doing that with Paige. I mean, that was Paige and and it, Paige and Emma down in NXT were two of the best workers on yes. the roster. I mean, right now they've got who? Charlotte's down there. Ric Flair's uh, real life daughter. Yeah. They've got Bailey down there as well. well who are the pretty, saying it's easy to be the coolest kid in a shitty school. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I, where Emma stands right now, I don't, I don't think she's uh, far in the pecking order. And uh, what they're doing with Santino is just, it's just retarded to be completely honest. That's what I was going to uh, say. Like, if they would have brought her in the same way they brought Paige in, right, be a whole different story. They brought her in as a jerk off comedy character, so right. she's pigeonholed in the position where she's only allowed to get this much over because no matter what they do, they've already. Told the fans, all right, she's a comedy jerk off. You know well, I mean? you know what? And so they had the thing. I mean, you, you can compare it to. Uh, is she done? Is she buried? Or is she, she going to get Well, you can, you, you can comp- you can compare it to to Natalia. I remember Natalia on SmackDown a couple farting. of months ago. You know, with the farting gimmick like and everything. Ago. That was over a year ago. Over a year ago. Okay. Yeah. Well, n- time flies, right? Yes. But Natalia's over there. I mean, Natalia's one of the best, you know, divas on the roster, and they've got her farting and doing stuff like that <laughs> backstage. And it's like, what are you what are you doing well, with somebody yeah. like Natalia? It's the same thing with Emma. Emma's, Emma's a great Natalia, worker, and, and then they bring her up and they put her in this comedy. Know what they, style is. I mean, there's something going on with Natalia. Natalia, what's going on with Natalia? What is? What do you think is going on with Natalia? I, I mean, honestly, like she grew up with Jimmy Anvil Neidhart. I mean, you think that she saw, saw her dad smoking a little crack, and she know what doggy style is. I mean, she actually, you know, is she born again? I, I, I have no idea. I think her and oh, that's not her Andrew fault, man. Like, it's the WWE no, creative no, team. Did that's, he just that's say that's doggy style? He's no, he's talking thing. about smoking crack. Jimmy Anvil Neidhart's I daughter he said is doggy smoking style. crack. Did you say doggy style? That was total divas. The doggy style stuff. Yeah, she didn't it, even it, know what yeah, that position was. You said you had in Total Divas here. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's I, what he's I mean, talking about. On Total Divas, she said... Anvil, if you have Jim the Anvil and Neidhart as your father, you should have seen some shit. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen some shit. Yeah. Like, I'm confused. Uh, but no, on Total Divas... Is he talking... Alright, I can't ever hear him. Uh, on Total Divas... Thanks for the call, by the way, sir. Uh, on Total Divas, they, she had come out and said... Oh, she, my God. She don't know Divas. what doggy style is. So right they had the sex expert that helped Cameron. Uh, Cameron and... um. They had a Jimmy Uso. They had a no, 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 that's Naomi. Cameron and uh, uh, fucking that Jonathan. No, 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 that's uh, Eva Marie. Uh, oh. I'm, I'm ashamed that I know all this. Cameron's with the fucking uh, the, the 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 car Parisian, the Manny Gamarian. What's that country? Uh, I don't know. Cameron's born Armenian. Born. Okay, the Armenian guy. That big, okay. Remember, he almost got into a fight with. Uh, oh, backstage, right? Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. All right. Anyways, but no, no, no. They had the sex therapist come in, right? And she says, that she, says trip. she says, okay, we're going to walk through every room of the yes. house, right? They get you to watched the, it. I did watch yeah. it. Before they get to the kitchen, right? <clears throat> yes. And the sex therapist sees the banana on the That's counter. That's start. And, and the first thing, she says, oh, the things you can do with this we're gonna banana. We're going to put this in a special place. We're going to put this in a special place. <laughs> well, the, the highlight of that whole, oh, the highlight of that whole <laughs> run through was she wanted them in the We're hallway. We're going to Pat Patterson's story for yeah, I don't another know. week. It's a, yeah. it's a sour grapes note to end on. I like to end on good things. But uh, they're like dildos being used yeah, as bananas. Yeah, or like this. They're in the hallway right in front of their front <coughs> door. And she advises them, open the door, bang that bitch right on the floor with the door open. Let the neighbors look right yeah. at let and the tie does the talking right head. head. She's like, I don't want their kids and their disgusting dog to be watching me having sex. I put the up door open. I put up on Facebook, sex therapist for the win, baby. I mean, she was just, she was a, a raunchy, trip. she She's was a, a raunchy, horny yeah. chick, right? She, when she talked to Cameron, I like her voice. She's like, I want you to read some dirty <laughs> books. <laughs> no, TJ, some TJ, dirty yo, books. TJ sitting there like, you got to be. Fucking kidding yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how you get Be nice. Be nice. This, right? The girl I know was like that with me when I, because I got a reputation. And she'd be like, be nice, Matt. Be nice. And I'd be like, I am. I'm fucking nice. What's your reputation? I got a dick. I could be an that, asshole. I got a dick that goes sideways. No, this way to the right. <laughs> to the uh, right. Yeah. No, but uh, no, well, I got a reputation of being an asshole or like, uh, like, I say things. You are a dick. Without you filter. are a real life very dick. Very blunt man. with people, especially I, when I'm drinking. Yeah. I'm aware. I'm yeah. aware. So the, the girl that I'm thinking of would always be nice. Be nice. You be nice, yeah. right? 
And I, I, I even pulled her aside once and I told her, I said, especially when we were drinking, because we drink a lot, and I say, if I'm being a dick, tell me. If you if you tell me, I'll stop. Right there the there. problem with you is when we get you on the the hard liquor, when we get you on the oh, vodka, fuck, forget it. No, vodka, you're a meanie. Tequila, you're a real life meanie. Tequila is where I go wrong. Yeah, yeah. You are a real life mean yeah. guy. I'm thinking of an incident. The, uh, that got, we had a bar drink. right across the street from our live called the Roadhouse. Uh, it's funny. I'm thinking of the movie. I never thought of it. Everybody before. knows the Roadhouse. The we movie road ho- houses around here. Do we? Oh, that's a local bar. There was but, um, a, there was a segment. If you will, okay. on Dove Street, which we cannot mention on here. Let's not even talk about it. But Cotton? Was these? yes, yeah, and we'll drop it at that. Yes. But anyways, the Roadhouse, the Roadhouse, <laughs> the, the thing I'm thinking of. <laughs> I became best friends with that guy. I know you did. But uh, yeah, the thing, <laughs> the old best. I can't believe I did that. But yeah. Um, yeah, uh, the wrong. Roadhouse thing. I got. I was drinking tequila. Yeah. Uh, I was dared to go dance with a girl. We'll end on this. I was dared to go dance with a girl, and you know, I'm drunk. You don't dare me anything. I'll do anything. You'll fucking right. dare me. Dare me? You challenging me? <laughs> Fuck you, I'll do it. Go dance with the girl. So I just walked up and grabbed her and started fucking dancing, and she flipped the fuck out. Right. Get off me. You don't know me. Don't touch me. Because I grabbed her right around the hips, and I pulled her ass right into my dick, and I'm fucking rubbing up in it. That was inappropriate at best. I was an asshole. Uh, uh, so imagine she, that. Yeah, imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> she let me know. Long story short, she she was drunk too, so she's flipping out to the point of of uncontrollable rage, and I'm standing. Oh, fuck you, bitch. Fucking cunt, bitch. You know whatever. I'm being an, an asshole too. Uh, my friend Joanne. There, there's a picture on Facebook where I'm taking a picture right next to this chick's ass. That's Joanne. Can I, I'm um, not a fan of Nancy Grace, by the way. Speaking of cunt bitches. Yeah. There there you go. But, on that you want, but uh, so all right, so. Joanne helps me. She's yo, back up, bitch. I'll fuck you up. Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, the fucking bouncers see it's a situation, situation that isn't dying down quick. So this, the bouncers come over to defuse the situation. I bitch smack the bouncer right in his face. Long story short, I get banned from the bar forever. I end up going back once. Because I thought it was long enough. And, and they it, recognized you. I'm sure they recognized you. The whole you. night's going on. Nothing's wrong because there was two sections. The pool hall and there was the, uh, they had bands. And there was the band room. And in the middle was the bathroom. So to go to the bathroom, you had to pass right past the bar. I stayed in the pool hall all night knowing I'm, I'm banned from there. Uh, you know, you get drunk, you drink a lot of beer. You got to pee a lot eventually. Yes. You yes. get the beer pee. I got to pee right now. Me too. And uh, I'm going I'm first. I'm going first. <laughs> no, I'm uh, going first. I go to the bathroom to take a piss, and I guess they spotted me because like two minutes later when I get back, we're playing pool. Two big, The two biggest motherfuckers there walk over. Come with me for a second. <laughs> I knew exactly what was going to happen, so I take my cell phone, You're my out. cigarettes, I put my wallet, everything in my pocket. I know I'm fucking bounced out of here. You're out of here. We get outside. Bounced out of here. I like yeah, the pun. I, I like get outside, and I think they're going to beat my ass, you know, because I guess I smacked the guy. I figure he wants to fuck me up. But uh, we get outside, and they say, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? I'll play dumb, you know, I don't know, what are you talking about? Because I'm, I'm not uncontrolled because <coughs> during this point, this is a different time, you know, after, months later after I got banned, and they said, what the fuck are you doing here? I said, what do you mean, what am I doing here? <laughs> Drinking beer, I'm playing pool. <laughs> they said, do you remember what happened the last time you were here? I said, I said, no, I don't remember, and I honestly don't. I mean, this is all stuff that was told to me. I don't remember smacking the guy. I don't remember yelling with the girl. I don't remember none of that shit. You never day. remember anything. The next morning you wake I up. I got out a lot, yeah. And I had the coolest <laughs> chick. She would always forgive me. Like, she would, we'd wake up, we'd be in bed. She'd be like, you remember what you did? No, what? And she'd tell me, like, oh, you got a kid here. Are you sure? Still there uh, in the morning, huh? And she didn't care. She'd be like, I don't worry about it. She was so fucking cool. But uh, <laughs> the, the bouncers are like, yo. So here's what I said. I don't remember what happened, but I was told. They said, oh, you were told, huh? All right, so here's what's going to happen. Get the fuck off my property. <laughs> if you ever come back, the second you step foot on our property, we're calling the cops, you're going to jail. Get the fuck out of here. I said, yes, sir, good night. Walked home. And on that <laughs> night, and, I, and, and on that <laughs> note, good night, yes. WZ Army. Good night. <laughs> For this drunk cocksucker right here. Matt Boone. I'm a little bit buzzed myself. All right. Frank I'm Clark. Ryan Clark. Yes. See you next Tuesday night. 8 to 10 Eastern Time. Start it. On WZR Online. Start it.